Um, but no, I, I mean, I think, you know, we could talk about this endlessly, truly, but I think just that's what's going to happen when you have four people who are, you know, interesting individuals. <clears throat> so uh, we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> I feel targeted that here. so <laughs> aggressive. I love it. <laughs> I wasn't aggr- I wasn't aggressing towards you. I was aggressing towards other people. Um, uh, so, anyways, the uh, the Stormgate Stormgate stuff. So, Stormgate recently announced their closed beta beta is finally happening. So, there is actual news. But yes. I, I said we w- I wanted to do a Stormgate only episode because I think there's just so many there's so many things that can be talked about. Son of a that don't need knowledge about the actual game. Actually, like for instance, why are people hyped about it? I have to explain mm. this to like every person on fucking Reddit. And it's just like, again, to me, it is so simple that I don't understand how they don't understand. Same with like the Microsoft thing mm. where um, they, they are like, well, why is Stormgate so popular? And then uh, we're like, well, it's made by the people who made StarCraft 2 or like a lot of people did. And they're like, oh, well, but why didn't you good. play StarCraft 2 then? Or, or that or that. I'm just I like, did <laughs> Zelda. Grub, the art is like slightly not what I want. And there's a little bit too reminiscent of Blizzard. And that means the game's going to suck. God, I did yes. a four and a half hour run of an Ocarina of Time game, and three and a half hours were spent explaining literally just why having the same development team of people who worked on StarCraft II was beneficial, and why Wait. StarCraft, or sorry, Blizzard not having any of the former StarCraft devs anymore lessened my faith that they could develop a StarCraft Three. Three and a half hours spent on this. And like specifically Fear Dragon, not only is it the people that made StarCraft, it is the people that made the best version by far of StarCraft. It's the legacy of the Void devs. Yeah. And yes, they're. Yeah. But like, I, th- I think that's important. Like, there were issues with Wings of Liberty. There were issues with the Heart of the Swarm, and obviously there were with Legacy of the Void. But they fixed so many of those issues from the first two expansions. Okay. By the time we got to Legacy, like. Ah, uh, there's a whole thing, man. I absolutely agree with you, Beomolf. Plus, the I would say the most important person is actually the one who created the the engine, who created the mm, feeling of yeah. StarCraft. That is actually mm. probably the most important person to ever exist. James Anholt. Yeah. There you go. Shout out to shout out to James. Um, yeah. and that then that's who that is working on Frost Giant. So that alone would have made me excited. It could have been a bunch of like nobodies with no RTS experience, but that guy is there, and I'm like, okay. Still on board. You know, even, in my vein. you know what's even better, by the way, Zombie Grub? So not only do they have James Anhalt, they have this whole snow play thing, which is really exciting, and we'll have uh, massive observing so you can like do the Dota TV thing. Um, they actually mm. just announced a partnership with a cloud server company. So do you, like, do you know what? I'm sure you're aware with like AOE4 does, where they have a bunch of tiny little servers on, on Microsoft right. Cloud Azure. So effectively, you're not connecting to us central you're connecting to like the server that is equidistant between the two of you oh yeah they're they're doing that <laughs> and they're doing a version of that for stormgate and you couple that with rollback netcode and lag first of all unfair lag is is a thing never going to be perfectly gone because you know there are there are oceans but <laughs> it is and you you really can't have a server farm like in the middle of pacific kind of sucks um but like it is the, these two things mean that it is going to be so like it, it, we're not going to have to talk about it anymore. Like the the differences are going to be to a point where it really will not matter, and that is just ah oh, so exciting. Yeah, okay, there. So go ahead. So, so developer side of me, one of my first thoughts. I'm going to regret saying this, but okay. Imagine I'm playing an opponent that's like over here, and I'm over here on the map. I VPN to a server that's over here. As the game starts, we we end up playing on a server that's like around here, which is equidistant from us, according to my VPN. And then I unVPN and I'm back over here. And now the server's right next to me. Could you pull off stuff like that? Sorry, pull off what? Could you Fear like Dragon has VPN... been IP banned from Stormgate. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Frost Giant is uninviting me from all their newsletters right now as I speak. No, I'm very curious about like how anyways, I'm just curious about how can be abused. <laughs> That's fair. I'm it's it's not even so much that. I'm sure that they will account for a lot of this stuff. I'm sure they'll look into a lot of this stuff, but like I I'm just excited for it. Mm. I'm excited to play around with it in beneficial and malicious ways. I don't know why I said any of this. We're taking the superposition of Fear Dragon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, like, I mean, we're all going to be speaking a little bit out of our depth, even though Bayam of super PhD grad person and, and Sphere Dragon's literally a programmer and, and Steadfast has some qualities too. Um, <laughs> uh, Steadfast actually made Grandmaster. He's by far the most qualified out of all of us. No, but seriously, like we're going to be out of our depth because none of us have made video games. But um, <clears throat> and, and, but there's obviously, you know, the, there's literally professions that all go into making a video game. So Fear Dragon could talk about it. Bayamuth could talk about it. Setfast could talk about it. I could talk about it. And you guys who, um, you know, like Gauntlet Wizard, I think, right? Um, distributed systems and near. You can talk about it. Um, disagree with Rollback Netcode. You're going to notice when Rollback happens. I don't, I have no idea. You could be absolutely right. But I guess the idea is that... Um, People who are working on it aren't totally new. They're not me. I did not walk into that studio and said, you know what would be really cool? If we did this. And then they were like, oh, how? And I was like, figure it out. <laughs> like, I'm they the actually do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The ideas guy exists, I'm sure, it's from um, Frost Giant. But like the people who are working on it apparently... Uh, truly believe that there is a way to advance all of these things that most casual gamers don't think about. <clears throat> you know, mm. like, I would have just accepted lag as a reality of the rest of my life. But apparently it's it's not. Like, things could be improved on. Or the way that StarCraft II processes with its, you know, four processor, two processor, whatever fucking thing. Right? Like, I don't know a lot about it, but Single I hear core, people yeah. talk oh. about it. <laughs> oh, oh, are there exc sorry, you got me excited. Uh, StarCraft was single core. With how they're doing Snowplay, they they are doing multi core and that's like surprisingly hard to do apparently given the gameplay loop, but being able to have units on the feet like I have a powerful computer and I still lag out playing four v four like it, we, mm. game's been out thirteen years, multi core RTS makes that's also been confirmed it was uh, the December yeah. dev update I think it was uh, a while ago yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, it, in, in Gala Wizard, I think you're totally right to be like, they could just be, they're on shred territory and they're overeager. That could actually be said for everything about Stormgate, actually. Even down That's to the fair. ideas guy. If I was an ideas guy, I could be um, on shred territory and, and uh, overeager. So um, <clears throat> the one thing that we can almost be sure of is that the charted territory is the way that units move, which is still, in my opinion, the most important thing about Blizzard games mm -hmm. in, in total. Mm -hmm. So that much we know is like, is like good the music is probably also good but there's always a chance that the guy doesn't hit another gold mine um, and as far as all the programming we, i know the oh, one we did here was okay. pretty good okay. but yeah. that doesn't like is it is it going to compare to terran one terran two terran three mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who knows um we'll see. we'll see yeah but the system stuff the engineering stuff i mean i'm totally out of my depth on that but it does seem like it's totally new ground for an rts so you really do have to give some um uh you have to give you have to Give some salt yeah. to it. You have to take it with a grain of salt, all right? Take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> many, many grains. You, know. <laughs> you, got, uh, you got a mine, a salt, salt mine. Uh, you got to <laughs> salt the mines. Something like that? Salt yeah. the fields? Uh, we do know, by the way, that like at least in a local client, so not on a server and not dealing with it, whatever, uh, it feels as snappy or more snappy than StarCraft does it, at, yes. at, uh, as of like February development. So at least the feel is there. Hopefully. Yeah. And I, I don't think Nero's going to lie to us and... Um, yeah. yeah, as much as Nero made himself sound like a PR AI, uh, that's just yeah. that's just Nero. Like he's just, <laughs> that is really just too Nero. For his own good. Him, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. um, but it's it's pretty funny. Um, anyways, the, uh, the 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 closed beta was announced. Things are actually moving along. We're gonna find more information very very soon. Um, you know, we have all of our secrets behind the scenes as well, and we'll probably soon be able to tell you if we agree with the people who have visited. Um, that's the most I can tell you without being a dick. Because they didn't sign anything. They'd just be being a dick. Um, but it's still very exciting. Because there are people who have charted these ter these these territories before. There are people who apparently are, are willing to, you know, prove that things that aren't charted can actually be done. And so we have nothing but advancement. Which, even if it's uh, not meeting its goal, even if they end up overselling and under-delivering, is still really awesome to hear. Because I certainly, well, to be fair, I don't follow other RTS development, so there is that. But I usually don't hear anything about it. And uh, that alone is also already a good thing about Stormgate, is that people talk about Stormgate in a way that they don't ever talk about other games. There are casual RTS fans, and they absolutely do follow like Northgard development or something like that. But not to the extent that people do with Stormgate. So um, it's really exciting that they uh, are... are talking about these advancements and that they're trying to improve on all of these tiny little details 
that, again, a lot of casual people don't think about. If, if we went into one of these conversations with them and they said, well, we just don't really like the way StarCraft feels. Can you imagine what we would have done as like the StarCraft community if that had been leaked after like talking to them? And I'm just like, yeah, they said oh, that God. StarCraft doesn't feel good. Oh, my yeah, God. Like, no one would fucking care about this game. <laughs> that is why I didn't play. I never got into AOE. Like I played the beta. I'm like, this, this feels horrible. And in fairness, it's because it simulates like an order of magnitude slower than StarCraft does. It's like eight, eight like yeah. eight times a second versus six or versus. I forget what the no StarCraft twenty four. It's it's like four times as slow, which just it feels so bad. The I, Age of Empire developers are jealous. They're envious of what Blizzard can do, mm -hmm. and so much so that they're even a bit. And this is you know secondhand information, so it's just rumor mongering basically. But so much so that they actually believe that a non Blizzard company, so like a non AAA company, can't sustain that standard because they couldn't do it. But apparently Frost Giant says that they can. And that's a really interesting uh, thing to hear as well, that the Age of Empires guys are like, yeah, we just we've never been able to replicate it. And also Stormgate probably won't be as good as y'all are thinking because there's not enough money behind it. And it's like. Are you just and are you just jealous? What a green, that, that green monster like Sarah right there. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the best the, the best thing about this, by the like they are not trying to ship. A triple A game. Like, okay, they're trying to ship, ship a ship a triple A quality game, but they're not trying to ship at launch the same amount of content. Mm -hmm. All right. They, they, we're not mm -hmm. expect there will be a campaign, there will be multiplayer, there will be a an editor at release or maybe soon thereafter. They're not like I don't think this campaign is gonna be as big as what StarCraft has. Like co-op commander is not gonna be as big as it was at release in StarCraft because they've been talking for a while now about you know continue having seasons of content and like and supporting this over the next 10 years or something. And then they, they can get away with having a 10 mission campaign. And it's just the human resistance or whatever. And like, you know, a couple, like three co-op commanders or something on base release. Uh, and then the, the editor, of course, which is by the way, going to be the exact same editor they're using to make the game. It's built in unreal. It's really exciting. If you're into that because they have this runway and it doesn't have to, we're, the box model's gone. And that means they can really focus on the systems and having three factions or over more than two factions at release and then have that opportunity if they want to add another one they can because the expectations are different and they're like they're doing i think they're doing a fairly good job of setting those expectations so they can so that the expectation is not that they're producing a 70 dollar game at release or whatever a triple a game costs now can can i ask you guys what mm -hmm. okay this is like an unfair question because there's so many unknowns and stuff but like given that we are coming i think most of us are expecting that there's going to be like a bit of a more gradual thing that things like mm -hmm. campaign are not necessarily going to be on like the massive scale of, oh, we're launching like a big blizzard expansion pack or like entire campaign thing. What do you guys expect from like pricing on things? So, for example, in StarCraft 2, unit skins and things were like, I think the range of I, I could be wrong. This, this is where my my privilege is going to show. I don't remember <laughs> how much they cost. I just kind of one awesome. unit skin costs two forty nine. Uh, two forty nine. Okay, so two forty nine for a unit skin. And I know the packs were like fifteen dollars or something, right? Something along those lines. Like the well, I think the the full like the full faction packs. Um, like if you wanted to buy them outside of the the war chest, it was like fifty bucks or something. Like they were really expensive. Yeah. So like that or like co op commanders or campaigns and stuff. Like what are your what are people's expectations for this? Because this is unlike StarCraft two and like Bam was saying, this isn't a box game. Like this is launching as a free to play game, mm. and I'm very curious what the monetization models are going to be. Was it you and I talking about it not on the? live stream about worrying how they're going to be too nice no that was us no we, that was literally we, we on the show that. oh it was okay it. last yeah. episode we, i think yeah was it last week yeah last we, we said we no, said that it wasn't week. last week it's like three weeks ago <laughs> no no sorry it was the last episode <laughs> yeah was, yeah we said yeah. blizzard was too nice with how they monetized their war chest yes yeah. yes yes um so yeah i'm afraid that's going to be the case so i'd say like just to throw out a number they might look at the unit skins currently of of because it's the, the closest thing is going to be StarCraft II unit skins, right? Age of Empires doesn't have any. Brutal doesn't have any. Um, Northgate doesn't even have any. It's clans, not skins. Um, <clears throat> so they're going to look at that. And they're going to say 249 is a skin 
of like one skin for base. They actually might make it lower because it's a very common complaint when you ask people that are currently getting into StarCraft that all of it's too expensive. They could yeah. actually do like $1 skins because they read this feedback mm. and then screw themselves over because it's not worth the development time of that skin. And overall, they need an actual like higher profit off these skins if they want to make this work. So I'd be really scared that it's actually way too cheap. I would want it to rather be like $5 per skin, $5 for Marine skin. And that might sound like I'm just, you know, bougie and I got the money for it, but I also am really interested in, in making this a success. So, <laughs> so we know they're going to, we know there's going to be a battle pass. They've, um, they've had a, like a subreddit where they ask for feedback and whatever. And correct me if I'm wrong. I, don't, I feel like in general, when we see games that have battle passes and you can buy skins, the primary profit driver is the battle pass. Mm. and like people buy skins whatever uh and i may be wrong on that i just feel like that's kind of the impression that i've had um so i can see like a 15 or 20 dollar battle pass or something the thing that i think is really interesting or the, the question that i think is interesting is whether they follow the um like the apex model where if you complete the battle pass enough you get the next one for free effectively you earn enough in-game currency for it mm. or mm. whether they follow the the war chest model or the ti or like, like the mm. dota battle pass which i think is I think in general, the Dota Battle Pass, at least what it used to be, is by far the best model. But, um, well, you have to buy it every time. Like, maybe you can sell off some skins and you'll make the money, but you have to buy it with real money every time. You're not buying it for currency, um, which I think is which is a better financial model for uh, Frost Giant. You're buying it every time. Uh, but I definitely see a lot of people talk about how much they love the uh, the Fortnite Battle Pass and the Ape, or in the, the Apex Legends Battle Pass. Because if you do enough of it, like, if you play the, if you get up to, like, level 80 or something, you will have earned the next one. And then it incentivizes you to keep playing. But I guess the profit's not quite there at, as much long-term for uh, for Unreal or for, was it EA? that Yeah, for um, whatever company that publishes. Uh, right. Apex. Apex. No, that's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. But it, it makes a lot of sense, right? Because if you said, if you play enough co-op and thus inject, like, a player base in, right? Um, you get the next one for free. That could actually make a lot of sense, right? Because then you just ensure that they come back. So there's yeah, no just like yeah. one and dones. It's kind of like how League of Legends does the purchasing for like champions and stuff as well, right? Where it's like you play mm. enough to earn the IP, I think it was, to purchase like yeah, yeah. without spending real money. Or you can just buy the champions outright with RP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or... You submit to my, you you uh, subscribe to the Microsoft Game Pass and get them all for free. Right. Huh. Yeah, that would be yeah. the ideal. Um, um. Go ahead. Oh, what I what I want to see is I want to see the Dota thing. I want to see player cards. Ooh. I want to be able to buy a Cero player card. I want to be able to buy an Oliveira from IEM Katowice 2023 player card. Yeah, yeah. I want that shit. Give me that how, shit. Give me. How valuable is that really? If it can't be available as an NFT, which they said there. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. No, that's a, no. that's that's a really good point. Additionally, the the conversation around esports monetization, you know, some of the fingers uh, that are being pointed are at the fact that publishers do not play nicely with teams, so they do not give teams revenue share. That's also something Stormgate could do to yeah. incentivize think... the teams. I think Halo has actually done that really. I mean, they've made a bunch of mistakes, but I think for their partnered, uh, what is it, HGC? Um, yes. HC, whatever it is. For their partnered teams, they have team skins and that they have partnered with the team to like to work with and put mm -hmm. into the game. Um, and I mean, I've been pushing for that for a long time. I, I, for, for as much as Stormgate Nexus is worth, I've been, you know, pushing them to to allow that because I think it makes it makes too much sense. We've said this before. I want a Team Liquid console. I want. I want an Ents race car, you know, like I, I want those. Th I would pay good money for that in StarCraft too. Yeah, I, I think. And also what we really need to remember, because as far as I know, everything I've been told is actually public. You just have to look at a billion interviews for it. <laughs> so that's what I'm going yeah. off of. Yeah. Sorry yeah, if it's but... not. Um, We know that they want to make it cyclical. We, we know that they want mm -hmm. the esports to influence the video game, to influence the esports, to influence the video game. And that's also something that StarCraft II was way too late in doing. They did eventually try. <laughs> the engine doesn't even really support it. It doesn't. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as like the watch tab and, um, you know, like the like the, sim the Blizzard did do like player uh, streamer profiles, but that was without a watch tab, it can only do so much. Um, 
but they do want to incorporate that. So like it, allowing teams to be seen in a game, even if it's not the biggest game in the world, is still something better than a lot of other even really big esports can do currently. And I think that's a that's a pretty nice deal, especially if there's no uh you know legal hullabaloo about the sponsors being shown too, right? Like yeah. what if Team Liquid could say like, well, Monster, you're also going to be in this video game whenever someone has a Team Liquid oh, UI. Yeah. Uh, then that would be also fantastic, uh, as well as the players individually perhaps getting something from, yeah, yeah you and, know, cards or whatever. And I guess going back on what Steadfast said, the best part about those cards, by the way, is that Dota has a fantasy setup. So whenever they're running their big tournaments, That's, you yeah. you open a you open a card and you get this player in like rarity, and then you set your fantasy for the week and you get points, which gives you, uh, which gives you points that you can use to unlock skins. Yes. That you then and you get these packs by a pa paying for them or b by just literally playing the game for like up to three wins a week you get a new card pack. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yep. absolutely, it's it not. I I want a Sarah card, but if I can say, you know, ESL Matt, like the 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 Stormgate Championship Series is happening, and I have a gold Sarah card, and that means I'm going to win more points because he's going to play really well, and that's going to allow me to get more battle pass points or something. Oh, I want that. Yeah, that, that's that's a big and that's that's huge, man. That tickles, uh, that tickles, like, yeah, you know? yeah. That tickles that tickles like all sides of my brain. Yeah, yeah. And then um, think about what we can do on the broadcast. Like we can have a fantasy segment, or like you, you, we can do some fun things with like ah, you know, this is this this is the Cyril whatever he earned this amount of. There are so many we like we can have so many fun segments about it, or mm -hmm. just like build that in, and then that encourages people to buy more and you know become cyclical and yeah i'm just getting excited and, and every time the other thing that's really cool about stormgate and frost giant is that every time someone says something that they would like that starcraft 2 didn't have i can almost always say that stormgate's thinking about it oh, so yeah, barrett 100%. brings up the spectating system with a de in in game delay and i'm pretty sure stormgate's they've thinking about it. it they've announced it they, yeah they hired they hired the guy i think it's flexi uh who made that for warcraft 3 champions and as go. of the let me find the link I want to say it is the December. I want to say it's that same December dev update. They announced that they were going to have mass spectating on a delay. In so game, for in anyone, client, like Dota TV. So for anyone who's who's wondering why we're excited about Stormgate uh, versus SC2, all of these things have been discussed. All of them are being thought of. Many of them have been announced directly. Many of them have been proven. This is why many of us are very excited. Oh, here is. You go. A lot of things are pointing in the right direction. Yeah. And I know there's at least one naysayer in the chat um, who I'll, I'll pretend is a good faith argument. Um, there's no guarantee Stormgate will be successful. I am. I have you know gone on record saying that I think it could be an amazing game and I think they could do all the things right, but does it ever create careers is the way that I put it, like as a successful eSport? Probably not is the most honest answer because how many things do? Uh, how many esports actually make a lot of careers? It's insanely difficult to be a career in esports. So, you know, that's very possible. But what it does mean is that we get a good RTS that feels like the RTS that is unique to Blizzard. There's no other company making an RTS that feels like a Blizzard game. This company is. So at the very least, you get that. That already makes me all wiggly jiggly. And they're going to consistently update it. If I could play, wow. like, I like playing Northgard because it's obviously the thing I keep going back to, right? I love playing Northgard as a casual because it is a fun game to feel out and play, but it's missing some other elements about, like, esports and, and speed that I would enjoy. But we have people who are literally making a game that feels like the game we love, that takes all of the inspiration from the game we love and fixes all of the things that the game we love couldn't fix because it was designed back in 2007 and they're creating a product for us like even if it ends up being kind of like a half measure in every single regard like everything was kind of like muh executed it's still way better than any other option on the market age of empires 4 might be a good game like whatever but it's not anything like starcraft so if i want to play a blizzard rts i am fucked I play StarCraft II, Brood of War, Warcraft, all of which have no more development from Blizzard because they hate I, us. In fairness, they are re, they're reforging Warcraft 3 Reforged. They're doing it a second time. Boo. So <laughs> this time they're going to do it better. But uh, I guess going off, we're saying, you're saying GG. It, it is fair to say that, you know, all of us here, we do have a vested interest in wanting this game to succeed. Like we do 
as, and as much as you can say a conflict of interest, because we're not getting paid to do this, this is just us excited about this and news has come up and it's relevant to Blizzard RTS fans. There is that conflict of interest there. I have a vested interest in, in Stormgate succeeding because it means I can I keep to get I get to keep casting and creating content. You know, that that is what it is. It doesn't invalidate that they, this is something that is that we really want and that is exciting that has all these good things going for it. But you know, it's worth pointing out. It is. And I do try and keep that that real real, which is like if you don't if you don't want to believe that I'm unbiased, if you want to yeah, if you don't want to believe I'm bi unbiased, that's very fair because there is definitely some intrinsic bias, but I don't think that takes away from any of what I just said. Yeah. Like I mean, argue 100%. against that statement, not against me. It's the same kind of bias that I have where I'm like, man, I really hope we don't have nuclear war tomorrow because <laughs> Existing outside of a society and trying to, you know, forage my own food and maybe deal with an extra arm growing out of my chest, that just doesn't sound pleasant. Yeah, I'm biased in favor of that. Like, no I'm shit. I'm biased in my, in my own self-interest. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely I'm biased in my own self-interest. But it's not like they're paying us off. Like, no. we're, not, we're not getting some paycheck to be like, man, we sure hope that Stormgate works out well. No, we want it to work out well because we fucking love these games. And because our dad, who was super special, who used to tuck us into bed every night and bring us warm cocoa, well, for the last four years, he's been kicking sand in our eyes and punching us in the stomach every time he sees us. And we're like, man, it'd be really nice if he went back to that. And then here comes Uncle Frost Giant. And he's like... <laughs> You want some warm cocoa and a bedtime story, buddy? And I'm like, I sure fucking do. Please <laughs> just just give me some love. I love yeah. that Uncle Frost Giant sounds a bit like creepy, so Yeah. <laughs> it's um it, it's a love letter. Like, like is what it is. It's a love letter yes. to a certain community. It's a love letter to a certain type of people. It is a group of people who you know, again, this has not been confirmed, but who were told that you can't make this thing that you, you're so passionate about at Blizzard. You know, we're not going to support it. You cannot make StarCraft 3. So they said, we're going to make our own. And we're going to try to solve all the problems that have people have been complaining about for the last 13 years. And yeah. are they going to be successful in everything? Probably not. But they're going to try. And I think they're going to be successful in enough to make it worthwhile. And that's, you know, that's exciting in and of itself. Yes. Yeah. I think another thing that also I feel like a lot of people keep feeling like People who likes Frost Giant or like a lot are, are in favor of a lot of the stuff that they've been saying or doing is that I hear a lot of people saying that they think we're saying only Frost Giant, only Stormgate really has a chance to su succeed or anything. It's not that we're even saying that. It's literally just okay. If I need to find the way to like a McDonald's, I'm gonna go with the person who's been to that McDonald's before. I'm not gonna. Like that, I have the highest degree of faith in the person that's been to that McDonald's to find their way to that McDonald's, as opposed to someone that has yet to make it to that McDonald's before. Frost Jane is just full of people that have been to the McDonald's. So, yeah, I have some faith that they are they're probably our best bet to take us to McDonald's. Yeah. This is a really convoluted, convoluted way of saying Immortal Gates of Pyre has no <laughs> chance. Like, this is. <laughs> Nice. Like, wow. Nice. McDonald's. McDonald's. I was not even thinking of like, that. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I thought you were going like the David Kim game. It's like, yeah, we're going to be excited about that when it, we, we, fit, we hear things, but it's just that Stormgate has been. Honestly, honestly, I will say like in my mind what I was actually thinking about. I was thinking about Blizzard at this point. Okay. Because I don't know anyone at Blizzard that it worked on StarCraft that is still there. I actually don't know that Blizzard knows the way to McDonald's anymore. <laughs> look, mm. look, okay, so they, they you know, we know they don't. They pushed a patch that changed Colossus range on accident, but only in ways that didn't matter, right? Yeah. Like, it didn't affect the game we were playing, but somehow the numbers changed anyways, and they were, they literally have, like, one guy in the Classic Games division. They had Scarlet build the balance test mod because no one could make it properly in Blizzard. I, I'm going to do you one better, because this, this is all, like, super recent Blizzard. I will say, like, there was a point where, like, APIs and just, like, the general ladder and stuff had oh, broken broke. yeah. for a while. Mm. Do you know how it got fixed? Tell. I can't. Tell. Apparently, a World of Warcraft engineer found a tweet that I made about because I kept tweeting about it. They found a tweet that I had made. <laughs> DM me. Said that they, like, this is on, like, a weekend. Then they, they said that they were going to look into it and fix it. Completely outside of the job description, they were just like, I guess I'll go fix it. Or like, 
try and see how to get this fixed. I yeah. like that. That was the point that we were at. This is like a few years ago. And it's just like, yeah, like <laughs> I don't have the faith in Blizzard to know how to get to McDonald's anymore. Mm -hmm. I was not even thinking about any of those other RTS titles. But yeah, like I will say I do think like logically Frostjan has the best chance of finding their way to McDonald's. I will be thrilled <laughs> If any other places find, I don't even like McDonald's. I don't know why I keep using McDonald's. You'd be McDonald's. surprised how hard it is to find a McDonald's at four in the morning in Canada. <laughs> it <laughs> is very, especially one that's open. Oh my god! And not closed god. for an hour and refuses to take our money. Yeah. I, I was at a I was at a conference recently, and like a bunch of people come, were coming in from uh, not Texas A and M, um, Texas Tech, and there was like no McDonald's in Lubbock, which is like in the, Lubbock's oh, in the middle boy. of nowhere, Texas. So. Yeah. They were by like they, they were not excited about the conference. They were excited that they could go get McDonald's at like any time of day. So whether the rest of us were like we didn't cut like this with the conference, whatever, um, like camp banquets and things, like eating all this tasty food, and they're like, We're getting chicken nuggets. We never get so yes, zombie grub, I understand. Like it's it's not that surprising. <laughs> you need the in control almost McDonald's story again. <laughs> almost any yeah. time of day. Yeah, yeah, almost any time of day. But no, this is that's the best that's the best like that's the just the, the simplest thing the simplest thing they've been there before and they might not get there in the same fashion or it might not be as good as we remember it being but they're gonna get there and i 100 percent was thinking of immortals i don't really want to rag on them because i've done it enough but i think barrett's totally correct um they have totally missed their their timing to actually be exciting anymore they revealed their game way too soon mm -hmm. still have teapots because they think it's cute i guess even though that's literally like an animation thing everyone it begins animation is like i made a teapot and i put it in my show <laughs> um and it just doesn't look that great they can't no, even get a functioning stream to be honest i've tried watching their vods on their like um their their stream channel where their they alpha, show their alpha battles or whatever they yeah, are, yeah. exactly like unless tempo streaming it which apparently he's like kind of like hired by them you can't even find it they can't even organize their vod fucking collection well and when they do, it's like in like 360p and it bugs out because I don't know who the fuck is actually streaming this shit. They don't have a decent computer. Fairness, uh, they did have like for their alpha trials, like the, their $500 tournaments, they did hire people who worked um, on Arena of Valor Esports, I think it was. Mm. Um, and like that was actually well produced. Uh, but oh, okay, good. those are like their, their, their big tournaments recently. Um, but like you want to go back to like things feeling good or not? The reason that like, you, well, actually two points here. Um, it just doesn't feel good to play. Like the, the no. most important thing with any RTS, it's floaty. It like it, things do not do not uh, do not feel right. Yeah, they don't sound right. Yeah, and on top of that, you, we hear people saying, "Oh, well, we haven't seen anything from Frost Giant just yet." Like we we have we don't have gameplay. We don't have why are people excited? Well, I mean, we've discussed that. Um, but we have had some feedback that it feels good, and that's I think the biggest thing that we saw Frost Giant learn from the Immortal Gates of Pyre setup. They released like to anyone who had kickstarted like super pre-alpha like they, yeah. they were they were so far in that there was nothing there yeah and then it, it was such a it, bad feeling like they may they may be better now i've tried to mess around a little bit like it is certainly better than it was but i mean first impressions are by far the most important thing so yeah, for us, yeah it's like oh, and, man. and you want to talk about taking advantage of the goodwill of the community i actually really don't like immortal because of that they literally made like they just said like hey starcraft 2 slash general rts content creator do you want a flag in our game and we'll say that your flag is in our game and then you'll be like basically endorsing us without endorsing us and of course everyone that, said yeah. yes because there was no downside i don't know it was like it was like a flag wasn't it <clears throat> is, is that the, was that like their advisory council that had like um miss harvey huck yeah uh, it had uh, a, it had Noah, oh, i was so Monte surprised um, i was so surprised by the number of people that were on that advisory yeah council. but they like the advisory council could literally just be like they talked to them once yes <laughs> that was the weird thing is that it was like it didn't they really were all in their discord mean anything yeah um but the, i remember like maynard has a flag in that game if I remember correctly. And so that what they basically did was just like, well, there's no downside, right? You you maybe make money in the future. And so every content creator is like, yeah, sure, why not? But then it basically was like this, like, hey, the community is with us. Isn't that nice? And I think that was actually really poorly done. Even though it sounds like nothing but a benefit, I still find something icky about it. And then yes. they proceeded to not ever really do anything for so freaking long. Um, so I absolutely so believe that Storm Storm Giant, Frost Giant has learned from that. 
And then I think the way that they are using their goodwill with the community is much better, which is basically saying, say whatever the fuck you want, and hopefully you'll like our game. I have yeah. heavily criticized their art. That's one thing Immortal did better, was that their teaser trailer was actually really good, and S Stormgate's teaser trailer sucked. <laughs> it sucked. Yeah. And I did not pussyfoot around about that shit. And they just messaged me and they were like, yeah, we understand why you thought the art wasn't very good, but we think you'll like it better in game. That was all they said to me. There was no like, hey, we appreciate you to be a little bit nicer. So yeah. like, that, it's just so much better, no, in my opinion. Like, they've that been... already makes me feel awesome. better, actually, too, and that is that they didn't like, they weren't like, hey, ZG, could you, um, could you maybe like, you know, soften your language a little bit? But they were actually just like, yeah, like, you know, it's it's just a first draft type of thing. Like, we'll do better. Yeah. Yeah. Like the again, I so I run Stormgate Nexus, right? I had that we had that interview, whatever. That could have been a really big, heavily edited thing from them. The only oversight they had was like, yeah, just we want to make sure you're not leaking something. So there was like after Neuro didn't. But they have been so open and like so available to feedback. Like Gerald's in my it's like he, 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 like whenever I put an article, it's like, hey, can you send me it? Because like, I'm interested in your input. And this is not me to like say, wow, I'm cool. This is me saying they're paying attention to so much from the community and really taking it into account and not just saying, okay, well, you know, these people don't know. It's not the old Blizzard model. You know, these people don't know what we're talking about. We're going to do our thing. And there, there we go. Yeah. And then um, one more thing that I wanted to discuss, at least on my mind, might be a lot more, but um, I see uh, this is it's actually been a little bit new, but I saw on the Team Liquid thread, will Starker 2 have a signable eSport after Stormgate is released? Which hmm. is a question we could also answer if we wanted. Very but important. in that thread, um, there's people saying, why would I like a game that was made by people who made StarCraft 2 when I have all of these complaints about the way StarCraft 2 was made? So not like the lack of spectator mode or um, clans or like any of that stuff. But like, I literally don't think StarCraft 2 was the best e RTS that could be made. And I blame, you know, the people who are currently at Frost Giant for that. I know Bam have already mentioned that they're mostly like Legacy of the Void people. So that's not totally like one to one. But it fucking blows my mind that people criticize StarCraft 2 as if it wasn't one of the biggest fucking successes ever to exist. They're Except like, the well, the, the units clump up too much compared to Brood War, so I just never thought it was a very good game. Okay, it is literally like the only viable esport of an RTS that's fucking out there, and it's sold massively, and people fucking love the game and talk highly about their memories of it. But no, you're right. It's a bad game. We should expect bad things to the people who made it. You're fucking right. Zombie, God. I feel like you're yelling. You're getting upset about the people who, like, protests outside of gaming conventions <laughs> saying that like you're gonna turn like people to the devil and stuff because they like dungeons and dragons it's like i feel uh, like you're you're literally you're you're getting really worked up over the people that just do drive-by comments on like our starcraft because they subscribed like 10 12 years ago haven't touched the game since don't follow or do anything and they're just like yeah i never really like starcraft that much anyways and then they just leave and you're left there getting super riled up. Because, like, otherwise, if they didn't like StarCraft, why would they actually frequent that subreddit? Hold on. Well, no, they like first of all, Or Team Liquid. First of all, these are people who might actually play StarCraft and like it. They just think that it could have been much better. That's the first thing. Second of all, do you fucking not know me? Like, have we just met? Do I not <laughs> yell at random Twitch chatters all the fucking time? Like, That's true. And people in chat are like, don't let the haters get you down. 13 years, no, no, no. 13 years, guys. I have literally been so aggressive to so many bullshit people yeah. because it's fucking fun. And I will While not stop. While you're casting too. While yes. I'm casting too, exactly. So if I'm gonna have a platform where this literally is what I'm supposed to be doing, of course I'm gonna do it. <laughs> 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 Come on. Um, but seriously, that does seem to be a rising complaint. People are like, well, do I really have faith in the people who made StarCraft 2? Could we not be more excited about people who have new ideas? And that's a somewhat valid argument, I suppose. But I just, uh, people who are like, StarCraft 2 wasn't that good anyways. I'm just like, okay. And, and you know you know the best thing? They are hiring new people. It's not just Legacy of the Void team. Like, they're hiring designers, I am assuming, that are not Monk. Who, by the way, you know, <laughs> he, he's great. He's awesome. He, but they have more people on the team than just the legacy of the void people that are, you know what their job is in part? 
new ideas, injecting new things. It's, it's <laughs> even like it. It's it's such a it's such a bad argument. Like, ah. Uh. Yeah. Although in fairness, it's like five people that's that like are still obsessed with Brood War over nothing else and just want to yell at clouds and I guess yeah, yeah. Brood Starcraft Two design is their cloud of the last thirteen years. Imagine and some Brood War elitist is like, talk to me when the Brood War developers make a game, and it's like you think people who made a game in nineteen ninety eight have an advance in any way, shape, or form, dead. <laughs> or are alive. That's true. I and, can't believe. Well, they made hotkeys able to control more than 12 units in 2024. I'm Lies. disgusted. Deception. I'm vomiting. <laughs> I'm crying and shaking. Well, remember, <laughs> right? Gates of Power came out of Starbow, which was the attempt to re rebuild Brood War in StarCraft 2. So if you want the Brood War idea, there's Gates of Power sitting there for you. Kind of. Yeah, really. they but wish. Closer. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, closer. Something. Yeah. I uh, I'm sorry. It's a bit of low hanging fruit. I, I like they're really passionate people, and they just want to make a good game. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. I did agree like, with them. I, I... I liked the Blink Stalkers. I thought Blink Stalkers are great, and that they no, wanted no, to no, make more no, Blink Stalkers. No, 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 no. You can't call them Blink Stalkers. That's the There's Dervish. Zephyrs. And they oh, oh no, no, no they're Zephyrs, right? They're Zephyrs. Uh, yeah, I thought, they, they changed, I thought it was no, the they, Dervish. They, they literally swapped the names because oh. they thought it was it was too confusing because the Dervish are now the spinny ones that do AOE. And the Zephyrs are the ones with the wind step, which is Blink. Oh. Look, man, I don't fucking know. I'm just making a <laughs> meme about how they ripped off Blink Stalkers and asked us not to call them Blink Stalkers. Yeah. Like, no, but they... I'm, it's, it's hilarious because they tried to go too far and they realized their names didn't make any sense. So they swapped the names of two of the units to, because, like, so the names made a little bit more sense. I mean, yeah. hey, that happens, right? Why are yeah. infantry units uh, armor upgrades? On the engineering the, bay. The thing that's boggling is that they just didn't, they changed the name from Blink. Like, the spell Trademark, is blink. Maybe? It's been blink the whole time. <laughs> what, what do they call it? It's fucking blink. Uh, windstep. Yeah, that's fine. Well, I do think of Warcraft's wind walk more than blink when yeah. I think of... Uh, well, the trick is if you're, like, if, if it did pop off and we're casting it, we're like, look at these... What are they? Um, Windstepping? Wow. Look, they, look at the windstep micro. Like, it's going so well. Let me talk about how often I'm going to say windstep in this sentence, and it just... <laughs> that is actually... Uh, that's an important thing to talk about, actually. That is actually, yeah, is so many, succinctness. Yeah, like so many of StarCraft units, it's Zerg, it's a Zergling, it's a Marine, it's like an Ultra, like they are easy things to say. Um, or even short, something you can shorten. Yeah, very easily. Whereas, oh, I can't even remember the, like the, the factions in Gates of Fire, but like all their names are hard. All their names have like, especially the, the second faction, which is like plant, tree, something, have so many accents in them. It's just like, uh, are we supposed to talk about it? Like it, they, they do not. They're not. They, they are trying too, uh, too hard to be unique, and that they're, they're kind of going. Um, Orson Scott Card, who yeah. think about how you, you do or not. If he's a person, he's mm -hmm. you know kind of, kind of crappy. He wrote a great book on how to write sci-fi and fantasy, um, that I would pull off my bookshelf, but it's sitting in Texas right now. Uh, and one of the things he talks about is if there is something that is not functionally different between how it is now in English or whatever language you're writing in and the world that it exists, do not give it a new name. It's just if, if it is bread, it is bread. If it is bread that makes you turn invisible due to something, then you can give it a fancy name. Hmm. But if there is nothing that differentiates it from something that exists right now, you just call it bread because that is how people are going to understand it. And you're just going to inundate them with too many new terms and you're going to lose them. And that is in part what the some of the lore building uh, with Gates of, with Gates of Fire is fantastic. Their music is awesome, but they have gone so far where everything has to be so incredibly unique and different that it's just it's it's letter salad. Mm, that's unfortunate. Sorry, this is this is this is th th this was a Stormgate discussion, and I, I found a high horse. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. it it kind of is at least a somewhat pertinent. Again, not to just be like we're just gonna shit them all day. It's somewhat pertinent to, to tell to say what other people aren't doing right. Right, because in a way yeah. that is still highlighting our argument, which is that Stormgate is exciting. So we can talk about what they're doing well, but then people can bring up all the examples they want, and if we know something about it, we can say, "Well, they didn't do this, they didn't do that," and yeah. I think that's fair, um, because all, especially because Immortals really set out to do what people uh, have been saying they wanted to do. Right, they want people who really are just like big StarCraft and Brood War fans, especially create a game, and we'll see what happens when that when that actually comes together. 
And then, and then it did happen with people who didn't really have any process involved in the video game creation. And we saw how it could fail because creating a video game is really, really difficult. So you can have the ideas guy, but everything else can go to shit. So, um, and, and that includes all these small details that, again, you just don't generally think of when you start thinking about video games, but literally how fast can I say a word, how easily it is for me to understand what that unit is and what it does based off its appearance and its sound. Um, is not something I would have ever thought of until I got into StarCraft, mm-hmm. but it's yeah. very impactful to it. It's, it's, super, it's super important for a unit to be recognizable because that's how it becomes iconic. Yeah. If it's not recognizable, if it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, then it's not going to it's not going to resonate. It's not going to become an iconic unit. So uh, I, I don't want to like pivot too hard, but it, this just made me think because pe- everyone's talking about, oh, we haven't seen anything from Stormgate. What have we seen? Well, we actually did get something that we haven't discussed yet on the well, show that actually well, has been released. It's very basic, but we have... Well, they they're calling it the artillery mech, the Atlas Ooh, yeah. artillery mech that was just released on Twitter. I'm looking at it right now. That was uh, literally this week, actually. That was the twelfth. That came. Sorry, that came out last Friday. Last Friday, so it has been out for six days. Uh, I mean, what what do we what do we think? It's a siege tank, right? Yeah, I I think it's really interesting that there is somewhat of an obvious. Um upgrade right to, to go to aoe mode because they kind of have this they've this deployed setup and uh then they have like a single target tank mode uh in in the picture and i i think it's interesting that they are at least in the concept art somewhat clearly uh what's the word reinvestigating this idea of locking locking splash damage behind upgrades right because yeah tanks used to have that and and now they don't because it just wasn't fast enough um and I guess the thing we can take about that is just th- just because a lesson was learned in StarCraft II doesn't mean it doesn't have to be re-examined. Um, other than that, I think it is it it looks a lot of fun. If uh, those of us that got the um, it, it's interesting also to see how the design has changed a little bit. Those of us that got the the mouse pad, it had a version of that. It looked actually fairly significantly different. I don't know if anyone uh, like has one we can kind of hold up in camera. Uh, I would, but they asked for my address to send me one, and then I know ne- I, they never sent it. Just, freaking freaking right. Canadian mailman. I have one, but it's over there, and I'm really comfy. Okay. <laughs> Mine's packed. Sorry. I can go grab mine, but I don't want to. Well, I'll get um... mine if it ever gets sent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about the frames, guys. Sorry about the stream. I don't know what's uh, what's going on, but um, the video will be up on YouTube eventually. But I, I will say that looking at this picture, because I didn't really take a look at it because it was just like the one thing, so I didn't make a video or anything about it. I do have some concerns over it. Um, Ooh, okay. <clears throat> it's cool as an idea right now, but the problem I, I see right now is that the tank mode and deployed mode mode are not going to have strong individual silhouettes. Okay. They look yeah. very similar to each other. So when a tank yeah. sieges up, it changes its silhouette drastically. Mm-hmm. But when this siege is up, it's literally just the top thing that changes, which means if you're looking top down, then it won't change a whole lot. And that's going to have some problems when you know it comes to reading the game. What I, I actually agree 100% with that. And I have a very simple solution. And I will expect my check in the mail, and therefore it won't arrive either. Um, <laughs> I want... So you see those four little legs. Um, I don't know if you can bring it up, but anyone who hasn't isn't looking. I mean, we can link it in the chat. It's fine. I posted a link in chat already. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. So the four little legs, they they have their like little little four prongs on each of them, the the, the yellow little things. Mm-hmm. So you have those sticking out when it's in its deployed mode. It's digging into the ground. That can be a whole thing. You can make it a really advanced looking thing. It can feel really cool, and it can even make like maybe a little drill sound to, to kind of be a little bit differentiated from the siege tank of SE and SE2. But when it's in regular mode, it's a transformer. Those things tuck in, and then there's wheels. There's wheels on the side of those four things. And instead of the siege siege tank that we're used to, you have literally the legs like tuck in, and it becomes like uh, it becomes like a vehicle again. I, as a robotics engineer, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> sure, I don't care. <laughs> No, but like, yeah, there are certainly some things, and I wonder almost whether they're just going to, because again, these are static images. Uh, the silhouette is, I wonder if they're just going to do something with, theoretically, like the animation or something, where, and again, obviously this is 
early, early, early days, and they're doing a lot of visual development, and we're not even mm -hmm. in pre-alpha yet. Um, but I wonder whether they I, silhouettes are really important, and I agree with you, ZG. But I wonder whether they're going to do something where they change like the particle effects, or they they change it kind of in how the animation works, so it's kind of very clear, but uh, has still is kind of on all four legs. I, I yeah, know. they they could literally just put an aura on it, and assuming that yeah. it's not going to be issues with like colorblind people or like performance of the the game, that might fix the issue. But what I'm really concerned of is a direct comparison is the planetary brood war skin. Mm, Technically, yeah, it has yeah, a whole thing yeah. on it, and it shoots, so that's well, very that different. Is actually that's such a good comparison, actually. Yeah, yeah. That, but it, you still just like an immediate glance. You're like, mm -hmm. so that's what I'm really worried about for yeah, this. Yeah. But I think there are a billion ways you could change it up. I mean, the, the legs could be used far more. The legs could literally reach out and ground themselves. And that already is a very different silhouette. Yeah. So yeah. like Doc yeah. Ock and like stab yourself into the ground. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or yep. like, um, uh, oh, Sunkins, you know, where they like go, do, do. <laughs> That would be so cool. I, I I'm I, I'm I know nothing about Brood War. I'm um, sorry. They they have like a tongue that goes over them and then goes into the ground and pops okay. up. So it just they just stick. Anyways. Oh, so that's 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 for the space hamster third faction. That's yes, exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> um. Anyways, I I'm still very very interested in the development of the art style and. Uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to more. I especially am looking forward to more of the Infernals because I really liked Ooh. that 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 potential worker. <laughs> okay, you you I, I, you saw the high res uh, worker, right? I believe like the, so. The, yeah. The, the like the super fancy new render. Um, they actually it was really nice. They sent me a they sent me like the 4K version that was like even even higher res than what they had in the Wapo article, um, which they didn't have to do. But first of all. We talk about worker units that have defensive abilities, which is not something that StarCraft has. And that is what I'm assuming that this is. Right, because first, I mean, I love the M, like, especially the little animation with the teddy bear, like, I need that as a plushie. But hmm. in this, the in this, uh, this, this image, this art that they showed in the Washington Post article where um, Mikhail something, like the last ever article that was put out uh, from the Washington Post games launcher vertical, they, they included this concept art, and it is the, I mean, you can see it's the Infernal, and it's the Flaming Infernal imp. And how do you, how do you feel about defense, here, I'll, um, how do you feel about defensive abilities, or like st state change abilities for war, for working units? I mean, that's something that, a, like, AOE has, something that Warcraft has, something that Starcraft does not have. I'm on board with it. I don't find that totally um, mm -hmm. contrary to the like theme or development of of starcraft or blizzard games yeah where like bring in another race i'd just be i'd very much be against or oh like a fourth race yeah. oh like that, that they're toying with yeah i'd be very much against it i really wouldn't want it mm. um why, but why are you... yeah go ahead <laughs> you want to know why i'm against it <laughs> i'm just curious like i there are the, certainly the balancing considerations Yes, um, uh, balancing will get more difficult. I also think it's going to divide the uh, population. It's already okay. divided because people just don't watch CBZs if they play Terran or Protoss. <clears throat> and then I guess follow-up question, how do you feel about mechanic differentiation? Like AoE has like, what, 20, 30? Uh, you keep adding... Two uh, has like 30 civilizations. So. Yeah. Four has what, like, six like, or like, seven? I don't know. The, the point uh, is they it's have... Like, a... It's like 11 or 12 now. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, they added more. I think. Um, They've yeah. been out of the loop. But again, I think they can add that because the mechanic, the raw mechanics are very similar and they have different, like there are different power spikes and things for the different factions, but the mechanics are the same. How do you, how different do you think we need, how different do you think the mechanics need to be for us, to, for it to be like, to, to for it to approach what we want, for like to be a true Blizzard or RTS? Or um, do we think we can accept like maybe uh, mechanics that are going to be kind of closer together uh, to A, support sub-factions, or to B, support, you know, four-plus factions? Um, I think what you're asking is how different mechanically designed races have to be to still feel like a Blizzard game? Yeah, to feel like what we're looking for, yeah. Uh, very different. Okay. If any of the factions are er anywhere close to each other, I think it's a, I think it's a failed endeavor. Agreed. Okay. Yeah, it's think... not a Blizzard RDS. Like, it's not It's not <clears throat> StarCraft Two or Warcraft Three's spiritual successor. It's... it's... Okay. Yeah, it's it. I yeah, hundred percent. One rule of thumb I feel like has always been true. Whenever I think about like StarCraft, for example, is that I think that usually if I think about like a particular 
uh, aspect of the game. I feel like usually two races will share the aspect and one will like heavily diverge. I feel like that mm -hmm. has just generally been a pretty reasonable rule of thumb for me. Or like, or they'll all have the same attribute, but they all manifest in different ways. So like, like workers and health, right? Mm, Protoss yeah. have shields for half of their health, but they regen their, regenerate them over time when they're out of combat. Drones or like Zerg units just naturally regenerate. Mm -hmm. We're and S SCBs can repair and like heal that way and stuff. It's like yeah. it's the same attribute that manifests in like three different ways. Or I think like another example would be like, oh, the starting unit for Protoss and Zerg are melee units. Like they only have melee attacks. And then like the diversion one is Terran has like the ranged unit as like a first mm -hmm. tier unit and stuff. I feel I feel like that has been if, if there's like too many categories or even many categories that they all share the same thing where there's not like at least one race that diverges i feel like that's usually been a good indicator for me of like i think that these there's things that are too similar like does this need to be an extra race hmm. yeah so I, oh god oh, go on no 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 my, mine was like a bit of a changing a, okay. a subtopic kind of so what i was going to say was i think there is a difference between thematic uh mechanics like okay only range units or like more range tier one units or something which in my mind are mm. that that's racial design versus racial mechanics warp or mm. um or, or injects or something like that like you, if you play zerg it will be fundamentally different because you produce your units in such a different way like you're you're hotkeying mm. everything off the larva it plays very very differently whereas okay well you know uh, there is not a lot of tier one ranged options for Zerg or something. That is incre That is intensely thematic, you know, but that does not change your macro cycle. Or, like, that does not change those in-deep uh, mechanical elements that, that, I, when I, that I, is what I'm kind of talking about when I say, okay, we have three factions because the in part because the mechanics are so different, and it's really hard to learn another faction yeah. because you're learning an entirely different micro, uh, macro cycle, and you're learning an entirely different set of mechanics that, well... say, in AoE, I mean, you're... you're producing in the same way things like that i think the same principles apply even for like the mechanics take like the production right taren and zerg you could you could say like their production even though they also have differences and stuff like their production is you have a thing at home and it comes out of that protoss mm. is mm -hmm. we have like the ability to basically like pick and choose and like offensively warp it i mean the whole discussion about defender's advantage and everything like i think even mechanically things like that exist or Maybe like another example would be uh, I'm trying to think like Ter or Protoss before Recall it got introduced at least like mm -hmm. Protoss had Chrono Boost it's like a macro mechanic you have energy you use it Zerg had Larva Injects it's like a macro mechanic Queen's supposed to stay at home you use it and everything Terran had like that but they also had like an additional thing that you could use the energy on that's like the scanning and stuff like. There's an additional aspect where it's no longer just a macro mechanic. Terran's like the unique one that has like this difference of, oh, they, they're managing like an extra resource as opposed to Protoss or Zerg. It's like, you do the thing. Protoss maybe has a little bit more decision making in where you do the thing, but like you always just do the thing as long as you have the energy. So, so I, I feel like even mechanically, I think that there's still a lot of like places that I felt like that rule always applied. I, okay. um, I do want to interject and say that I think we just look at Brood War for the basics, the 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 floor of how different they mm. have to be, because yeah. they did make it very different for StarCraft. They made it more different for StarCraft. They Much made yeah. Protoss mm -hmm. way more of an individual race. In Brood War, they were like Terran. It was basically Terran. Um, even Zerg, I think, is it feels more in line with the other races in Brood War because you don't have the larva injects. So, yes. um, yeah, you do have to pick between droning and attacking, but it's it's so much more, there's so much less droning that has to be done before you're ready to attack. So okay. it's yeah. it's not nearly as, uh, as uh, <clears throat> it, it does not compare to Zerg in StarCraft 2. So, yeah, Zerg in StarCraft 2 is a genuinely unique experience. Sorry, go on. Yeah, so anyways, that's my floor. That's how different I want the races to be. I don't need the micro, macro mechanics, which I actually would guess... Because at least the person who was messaging me saying they wanted to like hear our thoughts before he heard more wants to hear our guesses. I would guess they actually don't have macro mechanics as we would know I them. I think that's very accurate. Because I, one, it's user yeah. friendly to not have them. And two, people generally agree that they messed StarCraft 2 up more than they really helped it. 
more importantly, the devs have gone out and said macro mechanics were you know, were something because it was too easy at the high level. Like, the, the, the devs have acknowledged that it was a, a Band-Aid fix that was a mark oh. of, des of, a, of a design mistake. And three, the same people who are working, or some of the same people working at Frost Giant were the ones who tried taking away macro mechanics in Legacy of the Void. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Forgot about that. Yeah. Give me auto-inject back. Anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, no, thank you. <laughs> Actually, you know what? You're right. Like, one of the, Everything I was, was so heard. sad. I was so sad when I, I got playing in Legacy and they, all the inject was happening for me and I just didn't feel like there was anything to do. Yeah. I was I, also bored. Uh, it felt so much yeah. worse. I thought yeah. it was worse, too. <laughs> it, was, it was absolutely worse, but it's... I do like the idea of removing How much such a you massive gained? barrier to entry. <laughs> Sorry, what? As I, I interjected and said how much MMR you gained. I do like the idea of how much MMR. Oh. <laughs> no, I didn't because it was more ZVZ. Fuck that. Although, <laughs> more, although, more coin flips. In, in fairness, I never had as much playing StarCraft as I did like this first six months of Legacy because no one knew what was happening. We're all figuring things out. And yeah, I didn't care about my MMR in the slightest. So we're, just, we're trying things and it worked out, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. By far the most fun. Because uh, it was a totally game-shaking game patch. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, part of the reason it was a game shaking patch is because the economy changed fundamentally, oh, yeah. which is yeah. uh, that that's that every build order was gone. No build order existed when Legacy of the Void launched. Um, which does beg the question of what is the correct number of starting workers? I think twelve is too many. I, I don't personally think, that's a question think twelve. We can yeah, that's very difficult. Yeah, well, like... I think I think twelve is way too high. Uh, well, regardless, though, there's um there is something I did want to say about uh macro mechanics specifically or mechanics in general um but one specific mechanic supply drop supply call down in my opinion you cannot have that for one race and not the others would you rather have it now you people might disagree with that but would you rather have it for all the races or for none none I don't think it's a problem to have it for one race. Yeah, I don't uh, think it's a problem it's to have it for one race. <laughs> I think it's so gross to have it for one race and not the other. Really? I How think... many times have you just been like, I lost this game because I was the better player, but he had a fucking supply call down? And actually, you know, okay, Dave, <laughs> no, Dave no, let I, me go. I, I, no, go I, think, I, think it's, I think it's the get out of jail free card. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, I want to go one step further here, Steadfast. Yeah. Because okay, queen user. It costs, 200, it, it costs effectively 200 minerals, right? <laughs> like, yeah. it is a far more, ex it is, a, what, in fact, Going even further, we could argue it is one of the best designed yeah. energy expenditures. I would say because so. Because it has a clear downside. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Mm. Injects are the most basic thing in the world. You don't even have to choose between that and transfuses anymore because of the way that queens now, you know, accumulate. I'm gonna I'm gonna rephrase the question here from Dave. Being able to make and just flat out overlords so easily and just <laughs> raise your supply so much. <laughs> I Back feel to like that you either have to give every race that or none of the races. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Come on. man. Come on, Sarah. Every Zerg's going to like 100 out of 200 right now. Yeah. There's yeah, that no, Reddit that, thread. That is a weird thing that's been happening, yeah. Um, no, I, I I think that a get out of jail free card like that, because it's, it's I, 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 I disagree with all of you. I think it's really it's, not a get out of jail free card. It's literally not free, first of all, and it's not getting out of jail. It's and like. It's also one of the. Go ahead, sorry. I don't know. It's like jaywalking. It's like and you get a pass for jaywalking, which everyone gets a pass for. <laughs> yeah. And like on top of that, it, it is, it is I, I guess in fairness, Dave, it does become more powerful the lower level you get. So like if you're slumming it down mm. and you're really not very good. No, no. Yeah, no. The, number, the, many, number of the, times... the number of times I've seen Hero Marine win a push where he didn't build a supply depot and he threw down three depot, three depot top hats in a game. And you're telling and me that's he won not part with of the brave push. Dave, Dave he was already so going to win high. at that point if he had no, that he many not. resources to give up. No, what? No, you you get a hundred minerals right Dave, off the if, bat. If if that was winning the game, all right. If that really it's, truly no, it's that made it the didn't difference, lose him the game. It for prevented him losing, from losing and winning momentum. that many games, Sal it, would have already been GM years ago. Okay? <laughs> Sal like, doesn't macro <laughs> properly at a fundamental level. <clears throat> Neither does here, yeah. right, apparently. Flip it. And he's not Grandmaster because he doesn't macro well. I mean, I'm also willing to bet he's that not being, Marine... yeah, He's being punished for it. But yeah. he's... I, like, I, I have seen the games, my guys. It, it is... the Like, oh, keeping God. your production going is <laughs> very good. 
It is extremely strong. Yes, yes, it is. Um, That's fair. Yeah. <clears throat> Not Although, that the other races don't have other things that are strong, and there's something called asymmetrical no. balance at hand. Uh, that you know that <laughs> warpins Ab- should not exist because it's a get out of jail free card. It is no. The answer to that would be recall. Mm, or yeah, sure, yeah, war- recall wouldn't exist. Recall. But warp gate also is a bit of a jail- get out of jail free card because if you're not in position, you also have warpins to go there. Can we talk about how a if you, can if have you a gap on the their wall and yeah. then just warp in, and suddenly there's no gap on the wall? Queens being able to like or always being at home and having transfusions and stuff is also a get out of jail free card. You know how many times you have to respond to minor harassment because you just have a unit that's always at home that's auto. Yeah, let's talk about unscouted battle cruiser openers. Unscouted battle cruiser opener. Six queens get pulled together and you're like, fuck it. How bad openers? Six queens get pulled together. Fuck it. Queens. Can we just talk about queens? Can we go back to 2012? And blame Queens for the entire demise of StarCraft II again. They are a get-out-of-jail-free card. Can we talk about how nice it is that yeah, 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 I'm, fine, I'm, fine with, I'm fine with the idea of Queens being removed, but I'm addressing oh, okay. a specific thing. Like, I'm, not, I'm not defending the Queen. I, I Personally, I, I would prefer to have no Queens, literally. I think creep spread is a bad mechanic on both the the strength of it and the requirement to do it. I think they're both bad mechanics. Oh, okay. I think from both sides of the coin. You, you guys are like attacking me like I'm like dying on this hill. No, I'm I'm on your side. I just think that <laughs> well, the, the supply drop is like no, what we're, specifically I think, bad I don't one. think we're on the same side because Zombie Grub and I, I think, are fine with all of yeah, these mechanics. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like the problem is that you're saying to get out of jail free card when it just like that's why we mostly fundamentally, fundamentally disagree with. Not free, yeah. We're comparing it to other things to show the absurdity of calling it a get, get a jail free card. Actually, that's you know what? The, the way that I'll put it, the way that I'll put it is I'm <laughs> fine with race or like different races having different get out of jail free cards. Because I think that's part of the fun of the thing is like True. you don't lose the game just because you made that one mistake. And like some races just have better tools available for dealing with particular kinds of mistakes. And that also lends into why someone may enjoy a particular race. Like I will full heartedly say that I actually really enjoy the warp and get out of jail free mechanic because sometimes I just am out of position. I think that happens more often to me than me being supply blocked. Or me not having like units at home for like a particular like minor harassment stuff. I really appreciate that. That's part of the reason why I enjoy playing Protoss. And that's mm-hmm. what drifts me more toward that. I think that's a lot of the purpose of the whole asymmetrical balance. And I think those get out of jail free cards are part of the reason why, or like some the reason why we want to keep that kind of stuff is because that is something that allows people that have strengths in some ways and weaknesses in others to drift toward a particular race or to really enjoy something a bit more than the others. Yeah. That's my so then, Do you think we should have more get out of jail free cards? I'm actually okay with that. Obviously there's like, there's all of the balance considerations and everything, but like, I think we actually have a lot of get out of jail free cards in Starcraft. Yeah. I think that's kind of what just, I'm We also get to into is... jail very easily. That's, yeah, 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 that's, that's true. true. That, so, think... so then that, that begs another question. Do you think that like what do you I, I mean i yeah we're getting into like really deep questions like much more than i intended to um also but like we gotta bring up the supply depots take longer to build and take up all the sev time that's building it and that's why we deserve free supply depots thank you i did see that question or that comment but the it's true. was on par with all of the players that complained for years about how the assimilator had more hit points than like refineries and extractors. Like, who cares? I mean, Let me build a barracks before supply depot again, and then I'll give up the supply depot drop. I mean, SCVs <laughs> having five more HP. Oh, a pain. Um, true. We're pretty good. But actually, that, that's something that the devs have talked about in terms of, and I think going back to like the baseline here, the thing we're asking for is, you know, interesting spell casting or interesting abilities right mm-hmm. like who cares about it? injects feel good to do if you're good at it but there's no decision making there uh well the supply depot you have to make you are literally playing less efficiently to do it maybe like maybe it's get out of jail free in the moment but you are making less money it is a decision you have to make there are pros and cons right yes there are times when you don't want to inject because the link flood is coming and you want to have that transfuse but in general it is a decision that you do not have to make you say inject mm, true and the, uh, the 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 devs have talked about how yeah they they want every every spellcaster every ability to have mm-hmm. a decision making process not I'm going to mule 
Yeah. Okay. Yes. I you mean, know, that, that was initially the problem with Mac mechanics, if we really boiled it down, was that they yeah, said, they, we literally yeah, want to artificially mindless. inflate the skill cap because we don't, mm-hmm. we do, we are concerned that it's not going to be a high enough skill level compared to Brood War. And um, now, 13 years later, I think we all can say that it ultimately doesn't really matter. Um, I am mostly a Brood War elitist in the fact that I don't want the game to get that much easier. But I can't really disagree that there's more examples of even a simplistic game having an insanely high skill cap than in any game I can think of where I'm like, it's just you just can't get that much better. You know, yeah. the, the, the top is already there and people have gotten to the top and you can't get any better. You know, there's no mm-hmm. video game that I can think of that's um, uh, tic-tac-toe, you know, figured out game. <laughs> so. Not tic-tac-toe. Isn't tic-tac-toe a figured, figured out game? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, that's your, your answer. Yeah, well, I meant video game. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's an online version of tic-tac-toe, ZG. Like, <laughs> mm. Actually, I'm going to look on Steam right now. <laughs> how figured out is it if it's going to be with bow and arrow an Olympic sport? Hmm. Wait, what? There's an Olympics, one of the yeah, Olympic yeah, sports it's, it's that got Olympic, announced for the whole Olympic tic-tac-toe thing. thing. Oh, God. Tic tac toe with a bow and arrow. It's called tic tac bow. Tic tac bow. Yeah. Yeah. They, they I can't wait. How figured out could it be? I can't wait till the Olympics plays horse instead of basketball. No, no. You know what my favorite part is? I just really want to know what happens when people actually get good at tic tac bow and every game is stalemate. Like, oh, it just it ties will. every game yeah. because it's a figured out game. No, well, I mean, what's no. gonna happen? Uh, All right, I think Steadfast has actually it. been trying to give his point, and we've just been bullying him. So, <laughs> um, and another I mean, thing, and another thing. You're no, just... I mean, I mean, mostly, mostly. Then, is there anything? So, so for me, supply. The reason that I, I fixate on the supply depot is that I feel like, um, as a part of a macro mechanic, as a part of your macro. Um, building supply depots is something that is like kind of a sacred thing. Building supply depots, building pylons, building overlords is kind of a sacred thing in RTS. Uh, as in like, if you miss it, it's, it's meant to have like a, a more lasting punishment, but that's just, that's just me. That's kind of my opinion. That's kind of something that I felt has been like a fundamental part of, of well- RTS. I don't agree. But Do you... no, uh, go, ahead. That's, go ahead. That's go fair. Ahead. Go ahead. Um, but like, is is that something? Is there anything for that then in the game that you feel that that is the same way, or is there? Is there? Is it okay to have the blue shell? Is it okay to have the well whatever fix for that? Legitimately, though. Example. All right. I think that is sacred. That you have to get detection. <laughs> <laughs> um, Although, actually, there have been some really interesting things with like det- with invisibility being less punishing than it is in, in like the StarCraft era. Of I do think it I'm should be less it. punishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think and, anything should be permanently invisible. Yeah, I or... don't remember what's been publicly discussed on that. I think it's everything, honestly. They, any, no, anything they've, they've you know, said, they've said that they will not do. They're going to do a wind walk like uh, the Blade Master for yeah. Warcraft Three. The reason uh, yeah, I know yeah. is because okay. I don't know anything behind the scenes, and I know uh, that. Cool, cool, cool. Dragon, any anything that they talked about in the the preview last year is publicly talk aboutable at this point. Yeah, I, I'm uh, on the outside looking I, in. I like, know less than the rest of the other three here, so yeah. I will be the the litmus test. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They can message me privately, and I'll, I'll tell them whether that's public. Wait, or I do not. have one more thing about the supply depot to get really hung yes, up on it. Yeah. Do you agree that Taryn should be more punished for missing a supply block? Oh, not at all. No. Oh, okay. So you should. So we should just, have reduced time to build our supply depots. I uh, I mean, if you can balance the game around it, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Well, second question. Yeah. Well, no, we do I get punished like just, more. Recently, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I know that it's 22 seconds versus 18 seconds. Like that's that is a big difference. Um, mm-hmm. But like, I I, uh, I I'm I'm not saying we should change it in SC2. I'm saying, should that be avoided in in Stormgate? Okay. Yeah. I have a, I have a corollary here, steadfast. <laughs> How do you feel about different factions getting different supply, different amounts of supply from their supply units or supply structures, whatever they are, right? So, like for example, a mm-hmm. hatchery gives you less supply than a nexus does, if I'm yes. remembering properly, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yep. we have precedence for that in, in StarCraft, and that is effectively the same question, right? Can I spend no. energy to get myself some more supply? That supply depot is worth more now, right? Versus, can I build overlord? Like, assuming it takes me. 18 seconds to build an overlord and it also takes 18 seconds or I'm playing a PVZ. Okay. 
18 seconds yeah. to build an overlord, 18 seconds to build a pylon. If a pylon's worth 10 supply and an overlord's worth eight, it yes. it, I, I get out of that problem faster, right? I, I have my ability to interact with my supply is different than my opponent. Do you, how do you feel about that compared to spending energy to do the same thing? Because at the end of the day, you're spending time, which is what an energy is, energy is a measurement of, for supply. See, I, I don't, I think that's a, a false dilemma. I, th I think you're comparing um, apples to oranges there. Like, I, I don't think that, uh, so, so a supply depot being missed, an overlord being missed, a pylon being missed, those are mistakes. Now, in many cases, those are mistakes that have been forced out. But if one race has an ability to uh, mitigate that, now, once again, that comes back to like the whole thing of like, okay, well, now you have recall, uh, you have queens that it's like, oh, you didn't inject and you have extra energy for transfuse, like blah, blah, blah. But I'm referring to specifically the supply issue. Um, as far as having them just have different values, that's fine. Because if that's like, if they all have different values, that's just different designs for the race. Whereas one of them is a, a Band-Aid solution for a problem. What makes supply special to you? I'm not sure. I think I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's something that feels like, um, cause it's, it's a fundamental part of a build order, right? A build order is different from a strategic decision. Uh, and like, it, like if you catch an opponent out of position, for example, or if you are caught out of position, uh, that is different than you forgot to build a supply depot because your attention was taxed or something like that, or you just made a mistake. Well, well, we're, how we're about like getting... now I, I'm thinking about like Zerg players being less punished for being supply blocked, because even though you get supply blocked, your injects are still going and your larva is still popping. So you can make up for the supply block much faster than a Terran does. In, yes, but you also you do still lose la the larva production, the natural larva production off of each hatchery, and that is quite substantial. But uh, potentially a, a depends larva... on the timing of things. Yeah, also, it depends right? on the like, timing of things. Yeah, that's not no, 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 no. It depends on you're, whether you're it not happens so... when an extra larva was going to pop out before a larva inject actually like finishes. Because it was only so the way it works is like you'll continue building up larva as long as there's less than three so the hatchery please has tell, like please tell me how zerg larva mechanics work Ravi. thank you let, yeah let, yeah no let problem the 13 I, year you, zerg players know how larva suck in this game and have bad opinions yeah, so i'm mean, gonna explain this, the right? facts so, guy. shut the so, fuck up so. <laughs> yes i know that's how larva works yes I'm, chances we're are also that if you're on a, okay if okay dave to pull it back for a second we're also on a talk show so i'm not explaining it just for you i'm explaining for everyone god all right jesus christ man calm down you can just feel the walls coming up for steadfast. He's getting hit at by three different locations, and the walls are coming up, and he's about to duke it out with anyone who fucking comes at him, man. Does this make you feel better? I got an overlord for you. Like, does this solve things? Fear Dragon, I'm going to get some boba. Do you want some boba? Go on, go on. Continue. So the point just being that, like, for... So for those who don't know, like, Larva basically has, like, comes out and ticks on the hatchery, and mm -hmm. every time one of those like ticks iterates, then it'll say like, okay, are, is there three larva? If there isn't, then it'll produce another larva. But that means that if a Zerg player is typically just spending their larva as it comes in anyways, then after the inject pops out, as long as you are spending the larva that pops out like within a, a certain time frame before that next tick on the larva inject, that which you are supposed to be doing anyways if you want to actually maximize larva because this is not even getting to the supply block issues so far as long as you're doing that then you're fine so if a supply block happens and you're at the beginning of a larva inject and you only have like one larva you have the time to actually make an overlord without getting really any any punishment there so that's what i mean by like the timing does matter yeah that's correct right uh, it it depends. It depends on like what the status is, but yes, the timing does matter. And, but and also, that's... the question is: so is the punish? Um, is the punish similar then? So a Terran gets punished for using a supply depot drop. They do. They don't have a mule, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. For a scanner, yeah. And for for an overlord production, they might miss some inject. They might miss some larva. But you will all, you will very likely miss but larva. In general, if you're on like four bases. 
you might still have enough larva. And it doesn't really matter if you miss some. The point is you still get past that supply block faster than a Terran does, who's completely stalled out on all attempts to make production. Right? So there are there are punishes for both op for both scenarios. There's a reason why you don't want to get supply blocked as any race. But yes. Protoss is probably the only one that actually gets truly screwed. And well, it, not okay. even. Like, Terran probably still gets screwed the most. It depends on how much production they have. So, like, what point in the game we're talking about. But, yeah, no, Terran would still get screwed the most because it takes the longest. It takes an SCV to produce the entire time. And their production isn't set up to accommodate that supply block afterwards. Like an, like an overlord fairness, would be. Yeah. I think Protoss, there, there's one... No, actually, I'm not. it's not even worth mentioning. I was going to say, like, the difference in how production works for Protoss is a little bit different. So Sure. But yeah, but yeah, yeah I, I agree. Terran gets if you remove supply drop, I think Terran gets screwed the most. In fairness, if you're get like the, the one point where we talk about okay, the larva and the overlord they matter the most is you're getting all in and you, and you forget an overlord, like you're you're dead, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, if you are playing you're Protoss, all in, and you're getting and all you in. You forget a pylon or a supply depot. You, you can also... drop a you pop battery overcharge. That's true. Okay. Oh, I was going to say, more importantly, if you drop a supply depot, you get your units immediately to help you defend. You don't. Like that, that, well, true, you, you but you, you get your production. Faster. That's, yeah, that's... You, you get to continue your production. Yeah. Um, but that's so still... Like, in that... that doesn't count to me as a get-out-of-jail-free card. If I drop supply depots and then my marines instantly made, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's pretty fucking good. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. To uh, me, that also would be the equivalent of saying, like, yeah, you just use your drones to make some spine crawlers and you get the supply bag and you get spine crawlers. That's like, I, it's, it's like, are you, wait, are, in, are you, wait, hang, hang on, Rubby, 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 <laughs> Rubby, are you comparing here we go battery again. overcharge to building spine crawlers? No, not battery wait, overcharge. Base. I'm comparing, it's a I'm comparing what Bale was just drops. talking about, about okay. how if you do the <laughs> depot drop, you get units like the next round of units, like a, eventually and i'm saying like that's the equivalent of saying if you build some spine crawlers you like free up supply and then you can start up the next set of units and i was saying like that's not it's like not that helpful if you're talking about a situation where i'm about to die to an all-in yeah and Although, let's be real the often the times that a terran is being all in when they co conveniently have supply depot call down means they mess up earlier on anyways yeah that's fair so they're already screwing up defending the all-in because they didn't drop a mule in time we all know Terrans don't get all in anyways, you know? <laughs> yeah, never all in. <laughs> there, there, are, there are no good all ins against Terran. They're all against Protoss and Zerg. Um, anyway. <laughs> and, yeah, this has been a very long conversation uh, about and, uh, StarCraft. <laughs> Somehow we got back on a StarCraft, too. This is so weird. Like we're passionate. Somehow SC2 <laughs> returned. Nice. I, I do have a follow up <laughs> question, actually. Go, going back to the, the, the racial mechanical differences, mm. how do we feel about sub factions? All right, so that's the that's the that's the that's the 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 um what's the word when you come together the compromise that's the compromise yeah right because I'm yeah. totally on board the idea that multiple factions and multiple like heroes even right that's another big issue is much better for a general public appreciation and better for like the art community as well and so on and so forth but I think you could compromise and say that there's slight differences with sub factions. Um, I'd be okay, I'd be more okay with that, but it would also still depend on how broad they think sub-factions can be. If it was three main factions with two sub-factions each, I'd m maybe be okay with that. But if they're like, well, now that we have sub-factions, we can make as many as we want, so that by 2025, there's 20 sub-factions for all different races, I would be really upset. I'd be like, no, stop. So, first of all, it's been heavily implied that we will not have heroes in 1v1. They might have even said that explicitly uh, yeah. in a more recent update. Um, but, they, okay, so the concept of tons of sub-factions, how do you feel then about sub-factions rotating? Because they've talked about having seasonal stuff, right? Uh, different battle passes, seasonal campaigns. So, season one of 2025 is the human, uh, like, the human resistance Asia whatever and they have slightly different stuff and that is the human resistance sub faction that is available to be played and then in summer it's well the the fights move the, the the heat of the fighting is now in north america and it is the human resistance that is deployed there and it is you know obviously it, it's set up for maybe a more deciduous region and 
the you have that that is the faction that is unlocked and the other two have been mothballed uh to maybe be and i, I want to say oh what there, there's an esport that does this where they'll pull they'll pull heroes out um to get reworked and then they'll bring them back into rotation um so something like that where you have maybe three sub factions or whatever it is in rotation only one active and the other two are getting reworked for their next shot at it because then what that gives you and i'm not saying this would be perfect and certainly there are competitive integrity concerns i don't know um but then one of the most powerful content creation and hype opportunities is game shaking changes right uh dota just got a, a new 7.33 patch that massively changed things um you know that's the one that comes to mind immediately maybe because i follow dota more than other things but be, you have these changes that are like tons of content massive player base increases big viewership and if you kind of have this expectation of change, it's like, okay, we're, we're rotating X number of factions. We know what's going to happen. We know how they roughly play. You talk about it. Maybe, maybe just maybe that, that, that kind of deals with some of the issues and also means you don't have 27,000 factions available at the same time. while still having that um, variance in play. Uh. I, that might, it might be going too far. I don't know. I am just, I'm spitballing here. I'm curious. I think, think when you remove stuff that people really like it but can it... leave a sour taste even if it's something that's going to come back later but like <sighs> what if you set, like if you set the expectations at the start of this game we're rotating our sub factions we can add more whatever this will be back at some point you know maybe this if you made it like a, a vote type thing where they're like the most popular thing will remain like for whatever like oh i think gonna... pros would really be upset with that wouldn't they yeah, Bros like, would have it, such a very different opinion. Yeah. In fairness, though, I, I think we, I think it's been proven at this point that what pros want is not what, what pros think is best for the game is not necessarily what's best for the game. Like, look at map pool. It's a valid point. Uh, yes, that's like, true. But I do think if you're going to continue antagonizing people who specialize in something, like potentially very small, like Stormgate, they're going to stop specializing in it. <laughs> yeah. like, which is fair, but like that, that's what I'm talking about. Like, this is not something I would ever want to implement three years down the line in Stormgate. But if you like. It's one of those things that if you set the expectation and this is how it's going to be, and then you have everyone coming into it knowing that that's how it's going to be, right? If if we try to, if you try to do that from Wings of Liberty to Heart of the Swarm, clearly that's not going to work. That that would be up in arms. But because you have this blank slate here, slate here you can start to like consider opportunity, consider ideas that in no way, shape, or form we could add to StarCraft. Um, I guess like my gut instinct is to be kind of against it because I actually, and I know this is a discussion we've had before where there are two types of people there's the person who plays like all the time and who wants nothing but new updates and then there's the person who plays every so often and will be hella confused by a new update even if it's been that way forever and even if it's not even that game breaking like dota so people go back to dota with the new yearly patch and I'm like what the shit imagine if it was literally <laughs> different units that you could well, only it is effectively <laughs> with those game breaking well, patches they it is effectively new units. you don't you, you don't even get the satisfaction of playing the dryad wannabe she's gone you can't even mm. play her like that even well, even though if, she's completely different yeah but you have a similar to, you have a similar you have something that is similar to the dryad maybe i don't know maybe maybe not but it, that's the point yeah i i uh, it, it's tricky because it, it sounds too abstract what you're describing for us to like have a strong opinion That's one fair. way or another. I think, I think I have an opinion on this. So, like, I think in, in mm -hmm. say, Dota or, like, League of Legends stuff, when they make changes to a champion, I think there is a very digestible intake of, I look at the champion. There's also a little bit of time I can maybe read some of the text if I really care about checking and seeing, like, what is this new ability and all that stuff. But, like, you at the end of the day, you're pretty much limited to, here are four abilities. I need to know how they work. I have, like, a passive. I need to know how that works. And maybe when you're looking around, like you look also at some of like the items and stuff. I know there's like also some like skill or like natural tree stuff that you also pick out now and stuff. In an RTS, you're going to load in. You're going to have a bunch of units. You can't even look at a lot of those units and how they've changed or how their abilities and skills and everything have changed. You're in the heat of the moments. Like you know, there's not really a lot of calm time either to check on things. And you're making decisions to like to go for units only to find out later on that things have changed or like have shaken up. I feel like RTS, it's a lot harder to make those 
changes more apparent and visible to a player mm. than in a game like Dota or League of Legends or something where you just have a hero and you just have the ability and access to like a lot of those skills very early on. Um, then going back a moment, how do you feel about rotating units? Like, okay, so you have a siege tank and then you have, I don't know, a siege walker or something that like it fills the same role kind of, but it does it in a different way. It does depend on how much they're, how how good how they are. How fundamental they are. Well, yes, how yeah. fundamental they are, but I wasn't going to say how good they are at what we were talking about earlier um, to make the unit unique so that mm -hmm, people feel where, yeah. like identifiable with that unit. Like imagine if Brood War tank was removed. It's not just the implications of the balance. People really strongly identify as tank users. Yeah, that's fair. Or yeah. dropship users or whatever. So. I was going to say, in the pro scene, it'd be really brutal. It, like In my mind, something like that would be not dissimilar to being like tank of axe. Or so, so it's like a big change where it's like, oh, the change from like players use siege tanks to players use widow mines. Except you can't use siege tanks anymore. It's just like... I think for a pro player, I imagine that would be really, really brutal in terms of yeah. like consistency and things like I... that. Sidvest, do you want to go first? Uh, well, I was going to say something that I've always wanted was for there to be a mode where you could still play with tank of Axe. So what I would love is actually maybe a separate mode that would implement what you're talking about, Beowulf, but they would still have like the live release of the game, you know? Like the current patch, but then you could play like now, now, now. Then we get into like maybe really complicated stuff. Like, yeah. oh, like how do you want to really profile every single patch? And it's like, no, maybe not. But like, maybe we vote on as a community, we vote on like one or two or even three iterations that are you know somewhat common. Even that though, it only works. Ah, that's not even really my original idea. That only works yeah. so far as like if there's enough players to justify it. Uh -huh. But I think it'd be cool still to be able to access certain legacy units. Like, I, I still wish that I could play Archon mode Tank of Axe, you know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Almost like a mutation mode, right? Where you have... Yeah, yeah. Like, mutation yeah. 1v1 instead of just mut mutation just go up. I think Actually, yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah. I think this goes back to the uh, conversation that they've they've been having, which is trying to appeal to both hmm. publics. Oh, and all four publics, yeah. Well, the easiest answer is then that the 1v1 continues to stay almost identical to StarCraft 2 esports, which is that you get what you expect every single time you tune in with relatively minor changes with patches and stuff. Certainly no, like, suddenly a new unit. Um, well, unless there's a huge expansion. But you know what I mean. There's not just, like, every three months a new unit appears and gets swapped out. And then you do have 3v3, which is, like, whatever the fuck you want to do. Um and then they could also Heroes. have some type of 1v1 co-op mode. Even, like, you know, go down farther if they really wanted to. Uh, outside of balance stuff, I will say, I'm less opposed to new units on, like, an occasional basis than I am to changing or removing existing units. Outside of the whole balance dilemma of if you're introducing new units all the time, how do you make this work? Because yeah, like if you're... It's it, then it's like a more of an option and like it's more something that I might encounter this and I should know how to it is to like face off against it. But I feel like that's a much more reasonable ask for someone who hasn't been playing for a bit than I it mean, is to be like, hey, the unit that the things that you were doing don't exist anymore. In fairness, though, like if you just keep adding Starcraft is what, like 16 units per race, something like that, like. They they have a very small amount of things, and with what you're talking about, um, you're gonna have content bloat. And five years down the line, totally. you just keep add, you're gonna keep adding units. So I I and that becomes a problem in and of itself. Like one of the, I think in my mind, one of the things that characterizes a really good like Blizzard style RTS is it is, uh, it's beautiful. Like it it is um streamlined. You know, you have a you have a solid idea of of like how the basis of this work. You know what the options are, and there are still infinite possibilities between that. Uh, in chess, there are only what is that eight uh, eight rows by eight columns and infinite possibilities. Same idea. So that's kind of where I'm talking about like this rotation idea every more. But I think it is very important, like from a viewership from an esports perspective, to have things that shake things up in a way that more than maps can do. You know, 
or more than just like a, a StarCraft level balance patch can do because yes, metas do evolve, but unfortunately in this day and age, you know, I don't know that people are going to wait necessarily. Well, and there's been so much. Oh, go, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I don't, like, I just look back, I, I look at games that have these game shaking changes. And again, we talk about like the Dota patch, they changed the way the entire macro works. Like now you are rewarded so much more for killing enemy heroes than you are for farming. So the entire flow of the game state changed and the map got 20% bigger, 40% bigger or something. So it, it totally changed the way the game had to be played and teams adapted. And it was interesting that, but more importantly, there was so much hype around that from not only like the, 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 the subreddit or the, the team liquid equivalent or whatever, but in the broadcast itself, like, those couple tournaments immediately after the patch got so much more viewership and all the different streams, uh, the people like Grubby Streams Dota now and, and everything else, all, all those people that make their living doing, playing this game and making content around it saw marketed viewership increases because everyone's like, how do I do this? What do I work around here? How do I handle this, this hype and this interest? So from like the longevity of the ecosystem, have it, introducing things that fundamentally chain maybe not fundamentally, but that significantly changed how we have to approach the game as much as it is painful for these pro players that just want to nail down. I, I'm going to go for three. Like, I'm going to nail down my my timing. This is how I play the fact. I'm going to get progressively asymptotically perfect. I think from, like, the health of the idea of the ecosystem, having these changes and enabling them is really important. And I think just adding units without subtracting, it leads to bloat. And I I, I feel like that kind of degrades from that a little bit i agree on that adding units without subtracting yeah yes um only thing with dota 2 to specifically address that point um because grubby didn't start playing because they no, he didn't I'm, I'm saying people started like he he got a viewership bump and all the like and gork and all these dota streamers they got a viewership bump off the patch not they didn't start playing because of the patch well, Grubby got a viewership bump because he started streaming work or uh, Dota two. Yeah, he he but got I, he got a huge. I, I don't think he got a a, a meaningful bump. Oh, he, it was about five hundred like, viewers. Yeah, it's about five hundred viewers CCV. Okay, well, he was already at like four or five k when he was streaming yeah, Dota so two like, already. It, it's I, I don't want to nitpick too much, but I just I like it, he was he was already playing the game. The reason that I'm bringing it up is that I know that a, a, several pros actually did quit playing because of the change to the map. Really? Yes, several. Like, like, certainly no one at the high, no, no one at tier one. Uh, I don't think anyone at tier one would probably be quitting because you're getting like a hundred k a year salary, <laughs> at least, <clears throat> um, for Dota two. Mm -hmm. Uh, but like many of the t to be fair, a lot of people were quitting. Uh, like a lot of people. Quit I, a lot of the... people were upset with how the DPC is mm -hmm. set up. Like it's really bad for tier two and tier three teams in Dota two. So that's like a whole endemic thing, and it's like it is. So the difficulty of then having to relearn the game for potentially minimal gain is that's that's part of it. So it was like the straw that broke the camel's back for a lot of players, but that is still that is still something that like it's important to mention in regards to that is that there will there will be a cost. But I say that as someone who actually does think that change can be really good. Like, for example, Legacy of the Void, especially if things are in a bad state. At, heart, at the end of Heart of the Swarm, StarCraft II was in a really bad state. Mm. Oh, yeah. So when Legacy of the Void came in and changed the worker count, changed everything, it was, it was literally a new game. Literally a, a, a brand new game. StarCraft II, Heart of the Swarm, and StarCraft II, Legacy of the Void are fundamentally so different. Yeah. Um, I have a bit of a boomer rant take kind of thing. Um, okay. There was one point in time where StarCraft II was the most e watched esport, and it wasn't just because there weren't other esports. You you can't tell me that ten thousand people watched StarCraft II because it was only esport on. They also probably liked it. So, with that thought, we kind of agree that there is a wider appeal to a StarCraft like game than what currently exists, right? Other factors besides its actual gameplay has contributed to its lower popularity, right? Mm -hmm. So you're staying with me so far. As a boomer for video games, I would really appreciate if StarCraft stayed StarCraft, or in this case, my spiritual successor, okay. stayed the spiritual successor. 
that there would be a game for a boomer ass like mine to come back to that doesn't change rapidly all the time and is perfected to a certain extent on like a year to year basis at the very least. Plus, we do have maps. We do have things that change. So while the maps don't change for MOBAs and the heroes of the patches might, we talk length about how much more maps could be doing for our video game. So I'd much rather prefer staying on that path than saying, well, because modern esports do all these things, we have to do all the things. Because if you go down that path too much, then you might as well not make an RTS. So there's yeah. my that's fair. boomer rant. I, I think I share that sentiment. I think there's, like, as someone who's definitely, like, I've, I've quit Dota entirely just because, like, I couldn't keep up with the changes. And every time... It was just like such a pain. I was very much in that bucket of casual player that wants to play every so often, tries to pick it up, frustration from not knowing the game and all that stuff. So like, I think I definitely feel like I have that outlook in a lot of ways for things. As much as I've enjoyed a lot of the excitement in StarCraft as well, I think even sometimes in StarCraft, I've like felt some of that frustration when I haven't laddered or haven't played for a bit. And I, I think one other difference is in an RTS game specifically when you have those big changes and stuff i i think even like small changes in starcraft how do i put this in dota or some something along those lines like if there is a big change to like a hero or something like that there's like some in a comp a uh, competitive pro player level there's some things that you can do to like handle that you can do picks and bans you can like ban out heroes that are like super op and everything you can like change your heroes very easily like people have roles in dota and in league of legends and professional teams it's not so much like i play this hero like they do but you know people are pretty versatile and they play a bunch of other stuff in starcraft it's like if you build up a skill set and then they change the game dramatically it's going back to kind of what steadfast was saying where it's like are your skills going to transfer to what the game is going to look like in a year? And if you're not certain about that, because you don't know what the patch is going to look like, where if they're reinventing the game every year, how much time do you invest into this? Because you may your career may not exist in a year if you are not positive that like things are going to work out. And you don't have the things where it's like in Dota and stuff or League of Legends where you are already very versatile and playing a lot of different heroes and stuff like that. Even if, like, the way that the game gets played does change to a degree, there's still, like, a lot of the very, very core aspects. And, like, there's other tools at your disposal of, like, picks and bans and things like that that allow you to still try and play kind of the game you want to. I, I do think this this still does exist maybe a little bit in Dota as well. But, like, I feel like it's really pronounced in RTS. That's just my take on it, though. I mean, I'm in agreement. That's fair. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess the only question then that might beg is, uh, for the three v three mode, is it okay for them to have that amount of variance? Absolutely. Yeah. Do whatever remember, you want with it. And remember, three v three mode, they like they're guaranteed to have heroes. They're gonna have different. Um, they're gonna have like different wind wind conditions as well. Mm, so like, yes. It, in StarCraft, the wind conditions is kill all your opponent's buildings. Yeah. Right. Um, and they've talked at length about wanting to explore things like uh, capture points and all these other things that 3v3 enables and having like true role differentiation. So you have a, mm -hmm. a macro player and an attacking player. I, I don't know how. And the, the heroes that you have enable you to do that. So, yeah, throw a wrench at that one all the time. Like, I, I think that one is. I, I think it's it, if we go off the MOBA idea, I mean, that's closer to being a MOBA. You have uh, you're going to have you're probably going to have to pick heroes, you know. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, I think it's probably a little bit more of a fertile playing ground than 1v1 is, even as I am kind of advocating for more consistent change in 1v1. Hy hypothetical, all right? Let's say, and God forbid, I hope this isn't the case, but like, let's say Stormgate 1v1 flops. People just don't enjoy it, whatever, for whatever reason. 3v3 takes off, though, and not just casually, but that becomes the hub of where professional esports really ends mm -hmm. up being. Let's just hypothetically say that. 
Zombie Garb, do you still share the same feeling about how you would want to see the game for 3v3 balance? Oh, I'd just be if out of it. that was the core... Huh? I just, just I wouldn't you, I wouldn't play no the game. Interest. I yeah. mean, I'd play the really? game casually, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't really be interested in, in doing it. No, I mean, I play other games. I play other genres. I, I enjoy them. But, like, at this point in time, I clearly don't have enough interest or passion to get involved in things that I'm, like enjoying like i am su- super dedicated to the one v one thing so mm. unless i have a real change of heart i'd probably just bounce anyways i wouldn't have a strong mm. opinion but i certainly think that if that's what grows it to be popular is the way that it is being presented and made is the way that it was popular then you just keep doing the same thing mix it all up be lol so random all you fucking want i don't care <laughs> yeah <clears throat> that's that's a fair answer yeah. So uh it's a fair answer, but it's not a very interesting one. I'm gonna take my basketball and let you guys keep playing yeah. anymore. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm taking the ball and, and going Bailable. home. Yeah. Sorry? I was just saying steadfast and bail wolf had like reasonable takes, so I I feel like it'd be pointless to ask you the same question. <laughs> um uh, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> so how do you all kind of you know I'm talking about Stormgate or whatever. One of the things they've said is, okay, you know, pre-alpha is going to be July. That was going to be announced. Uh, there will be nothing. Like, no no content will be made out of that for quite a while. It will all be under NDA. Um, yeah. You won't be able to watch a ton of it. Uh, they have, by the way, said that they will show something before that July timing, uh, as Gerald put on uh, on Twitter the other day. Um, Gerald Vioria, who's the head communications director, I think that's the title, at Frost Giant. Um how do we feel about that? I, I, I think the answer is probably going to be yes, they should. We see what happens when a game, when footage of a game uncontrolled gets released too early with kind of with Immortal Gates of Pyre. Um, <laughs> but they're kind of like, uh, I'm not trying to punch down. I swear, ZG. <laughs> it's just so easy. You just yeah, can't help like, it. Like the, they're, they're kind of like content creation or they're, they're, enable, they're, they're scheduled of enabling content creators to make content about the game. Mm-hmm. Because that is, I think that's, that's it's not as important as balance but you want the game to be big you you need people to enjoy making content around it and start to kind of create the buzz around it as much as the game has to be good sorry what was the main question so they've decided that the eventually people will be able to make content but the pre-alpha and things like that will be locked down tight under nda specifically Uh uh-huh uh-huh and i i I feel like the answer is probably, yeah, that's a smart move. Don't do that. We'll make content when we can, but it's oh. still probably worth talking about. Oh, so you're asking if we should, they should not make that NDA. They should show it yeah, all. Or, or allow, provide some pipeline where creators mm. can make content and say, hey, check this out. Like, check on this. Is this leaking anything? If not, okay, go. Otherwise, whatever. Um, or maybe even just for some of the biggest content creators. Like, um, honestly, no one in the StarCraft space probably counts. Uh <laughs> it, like maybe Loco, he's got yeah, half yeah, a million Loco. subs CD on YouTube, the third or, or something. You know, yeah. Or like Grubby, you know, he's got four thousand viewers on Twitch. Or yeah, uh, I'm thinking like CD in the third level, who was really excited about the Stormgate uh, news, and he's got two point five million followers on on Twitch. That type of size, maybe just like give. And it sucks as a smaller creator that I would love to be able to you know be there in the first, but um, provide some kind of avenue for creators to make some some content around it, even that pre alpha stage, as long as it gets checked over. I don't know. Nah, <laughs> I think that's pretty, I, I, I think if anything, you give the, and, and this is obviously super biased in my own best interest, but in all of our best interest, you definitely give first, if you're going to give someone an advantage, you give first mover to the people who have stuck with it the whole time. A hundred percent. Now, obviously from a whatever perspective, it makes sense to use one of the big people, but the obvious compromise is you just give it to everyone um, yeah. at the same time. The reason and, I'm specifically I, saying... Oh, sorry, God. Oh, well, I was just going to say, I don't think you do the pre-alpha, though. I think you just yeah. lock it down. Uh, the reason I was specifically saying big creators is you know that if they say, you can make content in the pre... If you're in the pre-alpha, you can make content, but you have to pass it by us. That's not... That would be everyone trying to do that. You, me, anyone who's in the pre-alpha would be, hey, I'm making this video. Can I put it up? Because we understand it. Stormgate content at this point that is well made is literal gold, you know. Yeah. But um, that would that would bog down Frost Giants so much that it it wouldn't make sense for them to have that pipeline for everyone. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, this is again. I think the answer is probably yeah. Lock it down. Maybe go in with a beta or something. But I think it's it's worth at least talking about to get the information out there that that's how things are gonna go. Um, I might have missed some things, but I uh, what the 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 question is still mostly like, should they allow content creators to do more stuff before? Yeah. How how do we how do you feel about the content the pipeline that they've talked about? Okay. Um, I do think that. It would be really nice if, if just basically they said, I, I guess this is what you guys are talking about. Like you either open it to every content creator or you close it to every content creator. I do think I'm on board with that idea. You don't just pick out a few and let them do stuff for their channel. You can pick out a few and pay them to then tweet or be in a video or something like that. But I don't think you allow Day9 only on his channel to be playing tournaments for Stormgate. Is uh, this that different from how review copies are given for games that ha- are fair. about to release? Yeah. Although, well, I, be- I I also think that's different, isn't it? Because wait a minute, the ones that they then stream on Twitch, or the ones that they read an article about or a video about? I was thinking more like reviews and stuff, but yeah. So that's also what I'm saying. I think if you, what I'm saying is, I don't want. Day Nine's the tw- name that I'm going to use. I don't want Day Nine to be the only one that can play the game on his stream or cast the game on his stream. But if they want to give him a review copy so that he then goes on his stream and says, "Yes, I had the privilege of playing it, and here's what I thought," I think that's fair. Uh, we but... already have that. Like Neuro did that. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's totally fine. Um. What I would really like for them to do, kind of as an aside, because that's not really what this conversation's about, but I would really like them to actually ask us what content they should reveal as themselves. Because mm-hmm. I feel like that's if we true. had input on that cinematic, we'd just been like... You don't need it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so follow-up, or I guess corollary, because, again, I, I think we're all on the, the page that I just, especially pre alpha locked that down. The uh, the uh, How do you feel about the... Oper- or how do you feel about the opportunity to record content about the pre-alpha not release it until like the game's out or something like um archive archival footage uh, effectively because i don't think they're gonna allow that either like it's fun to go back looking back in like early early stages starcraft development and, and all the like early beta stuff that they had so okay let people record yeah, and then like use that when they're in the beta, when, when like when that NDA or whatever it is is last. Mm-hmm. I'm okay if they embargo that because yeah, yeah. I think early on, see, like for them, if they're improving on a product, like the last thing that you want is for people to just, you know, you're on version like 0.5, and then some YouTube content creator or whatever releases a video while you're on version 0.5 that's improved things and made graphics look better mm-hmm. improve the balance and everything and then they this asshole releases a 0.2 like vod <laughs> where things just look worse and for you it just looks like the game is in a worse condition than it is very, at the current yeah. moment so yeah. like i i i'm fine with the idea of them saying like yeah like you can embargo it and Say like, yeah, you can release this in like a year or something. Like after we've launched the game, you can talk about this and do whatever you want with this footage and everything. But like, not while we're in beta. I'm actually fine with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that. My my head is like, oh, I'm gonna make a video about X Y Z, and we're gonna compare it to this or something, and that that you know that that makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. but I hadn't considered this idea of okay, I'm just gonna take a vod of me playing a pre-alpha game and we're going to upload it as soon as i can and there's not going to be much context provided at all mm. what I, I have is, considered is, doing and i i've already talked to wordy about this because i think he's well situated for this is if they do allow us to do footage and all that stuff um during like a closed beta period when an embargo does come up i think i i and i think wordy are very interested in say organizing a tournament with a bunch of mm. people who do I have well. access yeah. to the game and then, right as soon as we are allowed to release things, if we're allowed to release footage from that earlier period, that would be a nice example of content that I think would mm. do decently well of like, hey, we can finally show you guys what this game looks like. Here's a bunch of players playing in a tournament that happened like a, a few weeks ago or like last week or something. Mm. I think I like that it. kind of thing would actually be helpful. 
had an internal tournament called the Yeti Cup over Christmas, and yeah. I would, I would love. I, it's probably never going to get released. We know Monk won. I would love footage of that. So much. Like obviously, it's it's not going to be well, whatever. But it's not going to be in well. Uh, it's not going to be polished at all. But man, like, even if they release it like five years from now, I'd love to go. Just wow, hmm. like, look at what this was back in the day. Like that'd be so cool. I mean, people still remember uh, referencing what you're talking about, Ravi, the HDH tournament. People still talk about that. Yeah. And that wasn't even the first uh, beta tournament. That, no, or, it wait, wait, came, was, it came in King, closer King, to the end of it. Middle I of think it? so, yeah. King of the Beta was the first one, right? The one, or was that? That was the, like... I think the finale of the beta. Was that the finale? Okay, okay. That I was Day I, yeah, I that was Day Nine's live event, right? Yeah. Uh, that yeah, that was uh, Tester versus uh, Idra in the finals, and Idra won, and he he beat Immortals with Ultralisks, and that's how I <laughs> that's how I knew it was a terrible terrible <laughs> tournament in terms of skill level. Still uh, a better tournament than GSL season one. <laughs> <laughs> wow that was some questionable shit right there man yeah that observing good lord um oh, in, in season one true yeah yeah no it was pretty terrible <laughs> how can you mess up observing that badly when the maps are that small it, it takes <laughs> skill to not it was extraordinary the they literally were talking no about reaper fights oh my god it was no multitasking so it was only only one thing ever happening at once yeah <laughs> um well, I uh, I wanted to bring up kind of, but we've gone so long. <laughs> We're like almost in five hours. Um, oh, we've that never technically ends. for East Coasters, we have gone to. This is now a two day podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The uh, I was going to talk about like what do you what do you think of the way that they do approach some of the bigger content creators? Because I know one thing people accuse us of as well is like, well, maybe you're not being paid, but you're really hoping you're gonna get hired because you say good things, right? It's like I really don't think they're going to be hiring based off how many good things people said. No. Um, In fact, if we are, I, I think you're more likely to get hired because you've been critical, like based on the conversations I've had. Yeah, I don't think they want sycophants. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, they, they really don't. Mm. Uh, so there's that. Um, but I, I do wonder because the kind of a, the assumption is that all the Starcraft people are almost shoe in for consideration at the very least, um, if not just the 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 logical shoe ins. Um, but obviously there are going to be all of the other strategy game content creators coming back out of the woodworks as well as free, the people yeah. who try and enter into whatever new esport exists to get their foot in the door immediately. So I do wonder, you know, because I know Steadfast kind of briefly mentioned, I think that you should reward the people that have been there putting in the grind, putting in the work. Um, do the rest of you agree with that? I think... Per, like obviously personal interest yeah it's great if they reward the co people close to them and everything that have been helping them out or been there and all that stuff from like a game success perspective no i i think they should just like if they can get big content creators and stuff to get a lot more eyes on it and get a lot more interest in it if they can bring back or hire like hey I, I a lot of people have criticized how they sent husky a bunch of like random store game and stuff like you know what i think that's totally fine because as much as a lot of people really don't like husky right now still a lot of people who actually really still like them and are like hey yeah i haven't touched or looked at or even like thought about starcraft for such a long time but seeing husky post on facebook or on that youtube channel or whatever really just brought back all the memories for me and they might actually check out stormgate i actually don't think that's a bad thing like so i think they should go for it i think it's two questions actually <laughs> where we, we talk about esports and casters and, and people like you and i um and then we talk about content creators in general and you know so i i th and it's actually it becomes even more interesting because like we've stuck with starcraft the warcraft three people have stuck with warcraft they're both we're, we're both converging into this ecosystem it's not fair to say that they've stuck with it more than we have you know we we just happen to have a scene that survived a little bit more but on the content creator side you know what i want and something that we don't do in starcraft and the argument is maybe because we don't have any streamers that are big enough to justify it but we're seeing a lot of other esports and they're having they're allowing uh, co-streams they're allowing these big content creators to watch it with them and they're massively boosting the viewership and yeah you have to be careful that you trust them so that you you fulfill brand guidelines but like 
imagine the first Stormgate land has, you know, zombie grub and pig or uh, uh, someone, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know Warcraft 3 casters, but, you know, some other yeah. big Warcraft 3 uh, English caster casting the finals of, the, of this event. Yeah, Sorry? he's casting. Ah, yeah. Monk is casting a Warcraft 3 event. Oh, this true. Yes, yes, this is true. He a 2v2 true. event. Um, but whatever, whoever it is, right? And they're doing that because, again, you they've been grinding this out, and they are by far the best casters in Stormgate or whatever it is. I don't know. Um, and then you have, you know, CDN the third, who, again, has been really vocal about being excited about this. Uh, and you have these other big Twitch names who got their start on Twitch for, because of StarCraft, and they've stopped playing, but they're excited about this new RTS, and they're co-streaming. And, you know, you get good viewership because it's a great tournament, whatever, and then you massively boost it. Because you're giving this access to these Hostile other content creators, that are to me that that seems like the best of both worlds, right? You you give you 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 boost the signal by these big content creators, and you still have you you have what is ideal, you know, that you still have the good product of these people who have been practicing their craft for for, for presenting esports over you know, or sorry specifically presenting RTS esports over the last four, five, six, seven, ten, twelve years. And to me, that kind of like splits the middle a little bit. Uh huh. I think you kind of summed up what I was kind of getting to in chat as well, which um, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to say like, do you only reward people who've been with the scene or only pick people who just have a high like viewership and, and viewer base? Obviously, there's going to be uh, reasons to do both, but just like you know, should we be getting credit for being involved in this scene? Especially if, for instance, you don't do a whole lot for the Stormgate stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, how much that's do we... Also, uh, that's very true, actually. Yeah, how much do we want to... You know, how much does, does Stormgate want to be that company that um, gives money to Husky? Sorry, Husky, if you're watching. And then Husky proceeds to not do anything besides do what they pay him for. Hmm. Although... Uh, that, that, yeah, or even just we talk about rewarding people, and again, maybe this is a self-serving statement because again, I have been doing Stormgate Nexus, not just StarCraft, but rewarding people that are producing StarCraft content or Warcraft content or whatever um, with Stormgate things, because they because you know a subsection of people of content creators have been on the Warcraft side, the Heroes of the Storm side, whatever, all, all these different communities have been producing Star or Stormgate content. Do you say, okay, anyone who is producing RTS content is in this, I've been grinding, they, they, they should be rewarded, or is it only the people that have been specifically producing Stormgate content? Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not trying to be super self-serving here, but I think that's a interesting um, yeah. thing to split. I no, mean, I, I, I think it's pretty telling how many people were like, hey, what the hell, guys? Why did you send Husky a thing when he left the way that he did. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think that's pretty telling. And I'm sure they were looking at that. And I, I'm not I'm not saying that because I don't know what's happening in the heads smart of test. the sorry? It, it was a smart um market assessment. You it cost them literally nothing or very little. And they got a good understanding of how the community was feeling about things. Yeah. If that's what they wanted to do. Yeah. Um I, I wouldn't say it, it cost them nothing. I think it cost them a little bit of goodwill at minimum uh, because people were like, come on, guys. You saw what he did. You do saw you think, how he left. Do you think anyone is not going to actually be in or is going to... Do you think the lessening of interest is more than the gaining of interest of Husky, even if he only did ever paid content? Well, like, like for Stormgate? no. But I think that the amount of rope, the or not even amount of rope, the amount that um of leeway that you'll now give to Stormgate might be subtly lessened just a little bit by the average person who who knows exactly uh or, or just has ill ill will towards Husky because of how he left, you know? So I didn't mean to make this a Husky thing, but how much do they really get from using Husky? Husky He's not a. He's not like a. He's not. He's no longer targeting the demographic that they would target, is he? He has started to really to uh, re-upload old content. All right, and how's it doing? I have no idea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not 
So, you know, if, if his Twitter has bajillion uh, followers and they see him, you know, they, they, they do the math, do the research, and it's worth paying him to make a tweet, uh, more for it. They give him free swag and he tweets. That's nothing but good, even if he was not very popular at all. Right. But it's not like Husky's a weird one to focus on because mm. he's kind of not even like he shouldn't even be focused on. He is a um, I don't what is his main job? He helps his girlfriend do the things that she does. Manager. And he's. Yeah, and he, he manages his own YouTube content as well, but it doesn't do nearly as well. Sure, yeah, like, and he yeah. he's no longer appealing to the demographic. So basically, the, the the actual question is: Is it worth the small amount of people that do say "fuck yeah, husky" for the people that say "fuck no, husky"? Well, here's the thing: well, the the other are no, there's no such thing as bad press. And uh, if you want to be really cynical here, sending husky that shirt. That was going to blow up a, a subsection of the RTS community and the RTS Twitter severe more than anything else. Because, oh, how, how dare they send this to Husky? I don't think a lot of people are going to care. Like, honestly, I'm not. A, it's like, okay, great. They send it to Husky. Like, whatever. That doesn't really impact me all that much. But if I'm trying to increase reach and I say, ah, you know, this is going to show up on Reddit. This is going to show up on Team Liquid probably. This is going to be uh, across a significant portion of Twitter as people retweet this. That is going to get – and that's going to be a different subsection of the community well, than – you're. I think you're. You're excluding the idea that they're still working off a lot of goodwill of these communities that we're talking about. I. I just. I don't think that sending. And I know there was a lot of controversy by a subsection of the population, but I really don't think that sending Husky a mouse pad. No. Does okay. Much of anything to diminish the goodwill of these communities. No, we're no longer talking about just the mouse pad. We're talking about paying him ten thousand oh, okay. dollars to be one of the commentators for the first tournament. Oh yeah, that that would be bad. Yeah. Yeah. But exactly. I, I think. I think. Okay. So here is the difference. I would say. I think it's going back to, I forget if it was Bamble for you, Zombie Grub, who mentioned, I think there's two different sides of it. There's the content creation side and there's the esports side. I do yeah. think that there's a difference between those yeah. two. That is absolutely mm -hmm. true. I think, yeah, we need yeah. to focus up on that conversation so, again. So the 10000 like, if you said $10,000 to produce video content and, like, sure, whatever access for Stormgate early beta stuff, if I, I actually would be more okay with that. If it's, like, he is, because I think in my mind... It's more like there is a job opportunity that he would be taking the place of, and there's like that opportunity is being removed. Whereas other people can still make Stormgate content, even if they aren't getting paid by Stormgate. So, like, people are still empowered to do that kind of stuff, regardless of whether or not they're getting paid. Whereas the commentary thing is like, you get to do it or you don't. Yeah. That's one factor for sure. But I'd, I'd still say that if you paid him $10,000 to create content on his YouTube channel, apparently that's not worth it, is it? So there's also legitimate fear from me, honestly. I like I don't think it's the same people who did invite Husky to the dinner at the Legacy of the Void cinematic reveal. But there is this really weird thing that happened where Husky was completely out of StarCraft at that point, And he had not made any sort of reappearance like he apparently kind of is in the last month or two. He was just completely out of it. And they invited him to the Legacy of the Void cinematic reveal in San Francisco. And he just sat there saying, yeah, I'm not sure why I'm here either. I'm kind of afraid that that could be a path that Stormgate could take because Blizzard took it at one point, which is saying, well, these guys were really big and they were really cool. So let's just continue giving them all these cool things. And it's like, you can't even argue that it's worth it. You can't even oh. be like, oh, I understand. They're really popular. You're just like, you just look at them and you're just like, what do you, don't do that. That's waste. Stop it. Yo, Husky Starcraft in the chat. <laughs> 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 he doesn't watch Starcraft 2 content. Are you kidding me? I, I do want to ask really quickly, because I, I know we've been talking again a lot about Husky. and I, I agree with you, Zomergo. I think he's like an, an odd case to discuss. Yeah. Do we want to discuss someone that like, okay, two examples that come to mind. I feel like it's two very different examples that are pulling like aspects of maybe what Husky would be. One is like someone who was involved in StarCraft for a long time ago, maybe has like s s some uh, like ill will for some people of the community, but for the most part is like relatively, I think, okay. Um, and then another is like someone that doesn't really have ties to StarCraft, but is a big content creator and everything. So like, Two examples I can think of are, let's say, uh, It Me JP as being like someone who's very old school StarCraft, but basically doesn't do anything StarCraft related anymore. Mm -hmm. 
or like RTS basically related, but he is actually still a big streamer and everything and does do a good variety of things. Like if Stormgate or uh, Frostrand reached out to him, had him do some of those like $10,000 things, how would you feel about that? Versus even let's say someone that doesn't have like almost any ties to like past history or something, like a Disguised Toast or something where like Disguised Toast I think is, he actually has an interest in RTS and stuff, but like it's never been any of his content at like pretty much any point. He, he was a Hearthstone guy, but He's just said before, like, he likes StarCraft and I think used to play it a long time ago. I think it'd make uh, no sense to give it Mage AP $10,000 to create no. okay. content. Okay, $10,000, like, okay. I know we're just using it as like a number, but pay let's... Someone to do I know, it. I know. I'm throwing out, like, a random number of, like, getting paid to make a bunch of content. Like, I don't think getting paid be, some significant amount. It made no sense even for um, Mage AP. I don't... I actually think the amount of people who would... How to put this? The deserves not the word I'm really looking for. Who would actually be worthwhile paying to do stuff for would only be big names in the general vid video gaming atmosphere. Like if I mean, they paid me ten thousand dollars to do something for them, um, that wasn't casting because we're talking about the content creation side. I'd be like, what are you, what are you doing? I mean, thank you, but what's happening? <laughs> Like yeah, I guess I'm like kind of popular, there, but like not the not like maybe like a hundred dollars. I can't sell myself, obviously. But there's very few people I would say would be worth doing, um, based on that it. history. Amaranth is Masters Random, and she is an Artosis fan. Amaranth's Masters Random. That's what I've heard. I don't believe like she's it. She's a big Starcraft fan. Um, I don't believe that. <laughs> I think she's a big Tasis and Artosis fan. Which is a very different I, thing. I, I've had some people that I trust tell me that she was she's at least masters in one race, and I want to say masters random. Oh, I mean she could but, be masters. I'm actually I'm beyond that already. But I refuse to believe yeah. she's a big StarCraft fan. <laughs> That's just what I've been told. She's the same so. person who types in chat whenever uh you know not Tasis and Artosis are casting GSL. Where is Tasis and Artosis? <laughs> Amrith's well, yeah, never gonna where, read where, me at this point. Well, she actually has where, a really where, where sick is Tasis? Why are they on this podcast? What? Where, where, is, where, where are tasteless and artosis? Why aren't they on this on this podcast? It's a good question. Future, well, I can just say something. We we tried to hire tasteless for this podcast, but we couldn't afford his Patreon fee of a thousand dollars for the sixty <laughs> or the ten minute call. Oh my god! <laughs> can we do the math on that real quick? How much would this cost? <laughs> well, we've been streaming for like five, five hours, hours now, so. Uh, oh, we'll look just, at me! We'll just take a couple months out of the I stream for Patreon. fourteen hours covering all the EPT cups, but his five-hour <laughs> podcast sure has me tired. He literally, literally just gave us sleep. a factual answer as to how long we've been casting. You just bully him. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's like two plus two equals four, and you're like, oh, look at steadfast. He knows what two plus two is. I'm I'm grumpy right now, and that's why I'm eating. Also, that's why I have given up on all of my manners. On this, that's why I started having. I got the boba delivered. I got Korean food delivered. I'm just eating on the show now. Like, oh my god, I'm... no! But that, that would actually really shock me if she was really into StarCraft. Like, if she could name me, I'd be shocked. But I'd also be, you know, kind of happy. She seems cool. Um, <laughs> so what were we talking about before that? Uh, content creation. E content creation. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And content creation <laughs> versus esports too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like in no way, shape, or form do I want this guy's toast to go up, show up on the panel, of right? The Starcraft tournament. Like maybe if he starts producing a lot of content, okay, fine. But I how would bring you him feel the about panel because he's this guy's toast? How would you feel about this guy's toast drawing a bracket on stage? Not worth it. See, like this was I bring his this appearance up because this versus what it is. It's not worth it. This was an interesting drama that happened in League of Legends where they had oh. actually a bunch of oh, yeah. people who literally were like some of the biggest League of Legends content creators for a long time mm -hmm. come on stage and they did like the lot drawing for I think groups or something for a, one of the League of Legends things. And people got really upset because they were like, mm -hmm. who are these people that like aren't actually involved in our esports scene and everything? It's, it's funny too because for those particular people, it's like people who had been basically the biggest content creators for League of Legends for like a long time in the early stages of it. So yeah, apparently people still get upset, even in that case. Yeah. Up mm. a tree, drawing the bracket for uh, for Ketavitsa. 
Like that's, I, 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 you know, Puppetry is not the big. Uh, uh, Giant Grand, Why are no, we Giant Grand Game is probably a better so example. <laughs> I know. Uh, like so, Giant Grand Game is drawing the bracket for Katowice. I can see why people would be upset about that. That would be. Yeah, I think that would actually be a good comparison. Like it would be a good comparison. A yeah. Giant Grand Games or like Winter or like yeah, just or, G before Loco that, was yeah. commentating, I would Wait. say Loco. <laughs> Wait, just I mean, just to kind of always draw brackets, though. huh? People yeah, got upset about that. People got upset. People got enraged and upset that like a bunch of like people like I think Lily Pichu and like okay, hold on. Reeves and other people. I'm upset that they're getting lots. paid. I'm upset they're getting paid to draw lots. I don't care who they are. I don't even. Okay, mm. here's the thing. I actually don't hundred percent. I assume that they got paid, but like they. It's possible they literally just got like the compensation of, hey, we'll fly you out for the event and stuff. Yeah. That still doesn't yeah. really make much sense unless they tweet about it and whatnot, though, right? And that's and a general, weird thing. And if they're getting flown out, they're losing out on so much revenue from their stream that you've got to assume they're getting paid. Maybe. Or they, they could like, be really they big fans, big. but. Yeah. But it is weird though because this is something that we've lightly touched on before. But there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of cases of really well, <laughs> shocker, wasted money in esports. Um, <laughs> but you know, cases of people being paid to do something because they have a bigger Twitter following, Instagram following, mm -hmm. YouTube following, and then proceeding to do nothing with those followings to advertise the thing that they're paid for. Mm -hmm. Right? Dude, like, you just fire shots like that and not have Roddy on the podcast. Roddy, really? That's oh what you're thinking God. of? <clears throat> no, but we, we did literally talk about this last time, and I just, you know, I, I had to say, like, because I think Loco would be the, that example where, and, you know, he's not malicious or anything. I'm not saying he's doing anything wrong, but if he was hired over someone else because they're like, well, his YouTube following is so great, but then he never made a single YouTube video about the tournament, what is that value actually? Can you give me a direct value? Probably not, but they'll do it all the time. So, you know, you pay a bunch of people to to appear in places to say like we got this guy and then they don't do anything like what if they they invited uh simu lu right that guy and then he never tweeted his picture which i'm pretty sure he didn't <laughs> right he did oh he, he did? did okay yeah. it was he on did. his instagram okay but what if he didn't and they're just like oh like that that would be wasted right if they paid him i don't know if they paid him but no, they, uh they didn't yeah, because he just likes it, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. But uh, still, this is a, this is another weird question that happens. I think just like we give a lot of credit to these um, social networks, and then the <laughs> actual direct like uh, like revenue, or whatever the direct profit from it is, really difficult to tell. Mm -hmm. uh, well, see, I, I'm being told by chat that uh, most StarCraft casters are given prime rib and champagne when they're flown in on <laughs> uh, first class. So, yeah. what's paying someone to, like, in the context of that, what's paying someone a little bit to draw a bracket? Not a lot. Like, it's dropping the bucket. That's true. There's so much money in StarCraft. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, that champagne. <laughs> it's going to be bigger than Counter-Strike. Yeah! Storm, or Stormgate, yeah. <clears throat> I'm just The, I'm the just question then there is, um, if, if it does, like, blow up as we're hoping, but I, I, we're being realistic, is that likely? Probably not. Um, but if we if we blows up as we're hoping, like truly to that level, uh, Steadfast was talking to me the other day. Are we ready for like the massive amounts of like parasocial relationships that are gonna be that are gonna pop up out of the woodwork? <laughs> like you're sitting there, you're casting the grand finals of the Stormgate land to three hundred thousand people or whatever it is, and then you have to deal with all the people that think they know you personally. Like that is oh we we we, we benefit from a very like. There are problems with the scene being very small, but this is also a very small scene for like, for it, it, and there are benefits to that yeah. in terms of kind of how yeah. it's 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 very mature at this point. It's uh, which you know pros and cons to that one, but it's you know it's all the same people. You know the like the, the social norms are well established. Um, it's not this massive thing where you, if you show up even watching the stream, you're going to get DM'd from five people uh, trying to fish you for skins, which is what happens if you try to watch the uh, the Counter Strike major. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Five bots, not five people. Um, <laughs> you know, but like mm -hmm. th that is a t that is a totally different paradigm that you know we we've gotten used to not having. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm really looking forward to being a part of something that like some wannabe uh, esports commentator thinks that they can usurp me. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you got your broom ready? Just like shove them down. <laughs> Get back Get down off my the basement. Ladder. 
considering that there's basically no way to actually gain my favor, everyone's screwed anyways, so. They could be nice to me, and I'd be like, you're being a little too nice. I mean, calm down. They could be mean to me, and I'd be like, well, you're a dick. Uh, there's just no winning, so. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the goal is just to be addicted to Twitch chat. Like, that is just, that is how you you earn their love. You tell them that they're dumb. Oh, yeah. No, I learned this a long time ago. I used to be kind of mean to my uh, my raiders. I was a raid leader, you know, and I'd, I'd be just as, like, snarky as I am now, and they, they fucking loved it, man. <laughs> they were like, do it again. <laughs> Tell me how bad I am. <laughs> Suck. If I wanted to pursue a new job and make lots of money, I know exactly what job I'd be good at. <laughs> and what job is that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> travel agents? <laughs> Border security? Yeah, yeah, TSA. Um, <laughs> just, why are you it coming rhymes, I don't believe it. <laughs> it um, rhymes with Gom the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad. My fan is like out of reach. So I can't. Anyway. Yeah, anyways. Um, that, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm really interested in how this is going to look. There, there's actually a certain amount of um, of fear for sure. That I, I've talked to with the other casters as well. Roddy, Roddy's so funny because he just is so chill. But I literally brought mm -hmm. up, I was like, yeah, there's going to be a lot of big big players that are coming into Stormgate to see what it's like, right? So yeah, of course I'm kind of worried. And Roddy's like, no, you're perfect, Jess, because he's such a sweetheart. But then he, he legitimately just, he literally just like, doesn't have a concern. He's like, nah, yeah. like the people who deserve to get it will get it. Because he sees the world in bright colors and yeah. cotton he also candy. Is the, he also has by far the biggest stream in, in like RTS. At oh yeah in, in blizzard rts right now so like no it's if funny. anyone succeeds on on their audience like maintaining their audience it's it's roddy it is funny sometimes because roddy will sometimes be right about things but at other times i'm just like roddy doesn't realize how much of a roddy scope he has you know looking to the roddy, roddy binoculars is, roddy is the epitome <laughs> of draw a circle and then draw the rest of the fucking yeah, yeah. <laughs> honestly though just like i don't think you understand how talented you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was actually one of the most telling things when I was at... Uh, when I was at... TSL? TSL, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, we were like going on together and I'm like, hey, Roddy, like, you know, like we're on in, you know, like two minutes. Do you want to do some warm ups? And he's like, nah, you're going to be great, mate. Like, we're ready. It's all good. <laughs> and he's like just looking at like... On his phone, just looking at like soccer scores, football for all the Europeans out there. Uh, he's just looking at it and he's like, he's totally fine, totally unfazed. And I'm like, Roddy, we're on in like 40 seconds. He's like, yeah, yeah, it's all good. Uh, and I'm like, you know, I'm getting a little nervous because it's my, I think it's my first time with him. And uh, he's like, obviously a legend. And I'm just like, okay. And he's like, it's like, you wanna, I'm like, you wanna, you want me to bring us in? You wanna bring us in? He's like, mate whatever works best for you you're 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 driving the boat this time or something like that like just like a really like you know nice calming thing and i'm getting like more stressed because we're like down to seconds now and he's still just like looking looking at soccer scores and like you know like thinking about bets to place uh and then we get into it and he's like welcome back everyone and he gives the most perfectly detailed analysis <laughs> like it was like it was like a switch flipped and he got suddenly possessed by Roddy the commentator again and I was like he is pretty good at that but I do again, steadfast remember you're looking up like that's important oh yeah 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 <clears throat> I, I do want to say that I think we were all treating you very much like you were part of the group for a while we did not treat you with kid gloves because I think you did the same thing with me kind of where you were like you know like you want to do it I want to do it like how do you want to you know do you want to we talk about mm -hmm. something specific, and I was just like, I don't know, man. <laughs> and I just like True. sat there scrolling on my phone. So, <laughs> uh, it was just uh, it was funny thinking back on it. We probably could have been like, oh yeah, well, like let's talk about it. Let's see, let's see how it goes. It's your first time, big guy. You got this. <clears throat> it worked out though, because you uh, you did the grand finals. So there we go. Mm -hmm. Yes, which is a very coveted thing in StarCraft 2 casts is to do the finals. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, you're a bunny. 
Olivera Maru. No, Otherwise, that's true, probably. actually. I actually have wanted to do the finals um, a lot more recently mm. than some previous tournaments. So, no, you deserve it, Steadfast. You did great. Oh, thank you. I, was, I wasn't I wasn't fishing for that at all, but it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, I but just no, I, I just... remember how nervous you are, and now I feel bad. Right. So, or you were. Oh. <laughs> Because I was just like, this is just another gig. And you're just like, it's my first gig. I'm doing such a good job. I'm going to really prepare. And then Roddy and me and Wardy were just like, yeah, all right. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> I mean, that honestly, that did that did help. Like, that was, it was good to have the very chill and, like, comfortable energy. Like, it was, it was definitely better. The, the expectation of competence. Like, we don't need to treat you any different because we know you're going to do great. So, whatever. Huh. Felt good. Okay. That's true, actually. That's I mean, if I was concerned, I might have... That's actually a very good point. I guess uh, if any of the StarCraft 2 commentators of a castle then went out there and were, like, looking at you, concerning, concerned and asking if you're okay and do you want to have anything specific to talk about, it's because they don't believe in you. The, we're just the like, oh, best, Lord, they need the most thing, help they can get. The that best thing you can ask so much <laughs> who's nervous and is clearly having trouble, are you doing okay? Which I will say has been asked by producers before, like seconds before going live. Like, oh god, hey, are you feeling okay? Oh, that's exactly what you want to hear seconds before you go live because it it just makes you feel extremely self conscious of like, hold on, I was fine. Yeah, like what what What's do wrong? I seem There's like very, I'm in a shitty mood? Am I doing a bad There's job? There's a very right big now? difference between what you're talking about because I know what you're talking about and what usually happens because you know Roddy would just be like, you okay, mate? You feeling good? And you'd be like, oh, yeah, thanks. So, yeah, you called me May. They feel really good about me. And, oh, <laughs> are you okay? Yeah. Then you're just like, why am well, I getting I'm with not. the kids' gloves? Like, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when Roddy does it, he will, like, the phrasing, I can tell you exactly what Roddy will say is like, Ravi, how are you doing? Are you having a good time? He'll, he'll do it like that. Yeah. Versus, yeah. oh, are you, are you doing okay today? Are are you all right? And it's just like, oh my god, what am I? What what, what have I what, done? Yeah, what energy am I like, putting out there? Holy shit! Did I, did I like wake up on the wrong side of the bed? Like, am I am I bleeding from my face? Like, what, what's oh, wrong? I do, I do love waking up at six in the morning to cast something and being asked, "You're not a morning person, huh?" As I proceed to just stare at my screen, looking at Reddit, and I'm like, yeah, I guess not. Like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah, especially when you're like jet lagged to all hell, so you're like, it, it's not even six a.m. It's just I'm tired. Like, I don't even know what time it is, but. Yeah. Oh, we've gotten very off track. Um... Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, these are things that if you were casting with Pokimane for Stormgate, what? how would you approach her and make sure that she's not feeling nervous about casting Stormgate? I'd actually be so fine with that. I think that would be so fun. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, could I'm feel sure she would be less nervous. I could feel better at something than Pokemon, which is not going to happen very often. <laughs> <laughs> like I will look at her and I'll feel bad about myself. I'll look at her success, I'll feel bad about myself. I'll look at her drive and I'll feel bad about myself. But I look at me casting an RTS and I'll be like, I got this. This is where yeah. I'm better. Nice. <laughs> it would actually be such a, a soul crushing moment if you like got into it and then she was just like amazing boom, spouting knowledge yeah like oh absolutely fuck. killing it oh god and like you're all the reddit like, threads wow pokey's a great cast it's like oh, well there goes my she's job she's nine years younger than me too oh no <laughs> it's all bad yeah that would be terrifying i'd just be like well uh, fuck me i'm not gonna do anything um although yeah in fairness a lot of those are internet comments that don't know what they're talking about so there's that Oh, yeah, That's for sure. Bad. No, I imagine that the thing is, is that she would no doubt, even if she was terrible, even if she didn't oh, yeah. say a single Massive. thing on the broadcast because she was too nervous to, she would have 10,000 people saying she did a great job. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. The power also, of a fan base. Also, I think even if one of those big content creators are nervous, they're still probably just going to be generally entertaining. So probably. Yeah. still bring something, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah. <laughs> they know how to turn true. the face on. Yeah. Uh, that's that's very true, <clears throat> but it, it's going to be interesting to see that arrive. If it does, perhaps it really will just not be enough of a firework, enough of a of a flash to, to even get that much attention. Aside from the people that have already shown attention to it, so I'm thinking primarily like Dana and Grubby are the ones that I'm like, oh okay, that you know they could definitely take my job. Um, they yeah. could certainly see Although, that happening. Yeah. Dana, I don't think you have to worry about Day Nine because he just announced his own game dev studio. 
So I, I like, think he's going to work with time Stormgate, though. Oh, he is, absolutely. Uh, and he's going to stream it, most likely. And, go, I mean, his mom's on there. But in terms of, like, consistently getting a casting gig, I don't think he's going to have the time for it. No, consistent, maybe not. But he did cast StarCraft 2 while working on his own game. That's mm -hmm. fair. Uh, yeah, okay, that... That was the timeline. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So he's done it before. I I would say I would hope he doesn't. He's too old for that shit. All right. He needs to take a chill pill. He doesn't need to be streaming all the time, making his own video game and commentate all the storm giant storm. God damn it. Stormgate stuff because he deserves rest. And we love day nine. and We want him to rest. But nice and not take our jobs. 15 <laughs> years ago, he did all that shit. And you're just like, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> calm down. I mean, I think I'm pretty sure he has talked about how much he was burnt out, right? Like how much he really overworked himself. Yeah. So. yeah. True, true. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't have to, which is the nice thing about being, you know, having done that work. So you don't really have to. You can just pop in and be like, hey. People are like, yeah. That's why I learned my lesson. And I just don't stream or create any content anymore. <laughs> I just yeah. show up on other people's streams and I eat mean, on them. and That way be... you're a novelty. Yeah, exactly. People don't get tired of you. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we were talking about uh, like Frost Giants, the cool uncle that just kind of shows up and tries to be nice after like your your dad goes out for for milk and never returns. I mean, we just get cool Uncle Day Nine that shows up on the street on the broadcast occasionally. There we go. That's his job. It works. He shows up with his cat, which is very cute, and goes from there. Don't mind it. Would not mind not it at all. Especially because yeah. he really is the to me. He has been not to gush over him too much because he is a human. He has his faults. But he really has been actually the, you. the best form <laughs> of content creator to respectfully, I think, leave the scene. Like, mm, oh, yeah, people mm -hmm. will talk about how he doesn't you know, he, he was totally fake and he just left and didn't do anything. He would commonly come into people's chats just to chat. You know, he still raids us every now and again. Yeah. He'd talk about the recent GSL performance. I mean, yeah, he's not literally working in StarCraft 2, but he liked it. And then his decision not to work in StarCraft or any Blizzard game at all. You just got to respect that, right? Which is something yeah, that he's he, announced before. Yeah. <clears throat> and he left reasoning for it. It wasn't just, I'm disappearing and deleting all my content. It's, this doesn't make sense for me. I've grown beyond this, whatever. Like, this is what's happening. I'm letting you know what's happening. Sorry if that's not what you like. And in, the, in his classic day nine charisma, I mean, you can't get mad at him for that. No, you really uh, can't. Yeah. No. And I, I don't think he does a poor job either when he does appear. No. Um, so, yeah, I'd be totally fine with that. There's going to be, I think, certainly a lot more people who don't do those things where they really are just completely out of it until they're paid to be. And I'm going to mm -hmm. let like them less as time goes on. And there's going to be people who are maybe even very interested, but are actually legitimately just like bad at their job. And I'm going to be really annoyed at that, too. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, I would say that the bar has been set that no one who casts StarCraft 2 at this point is bad. But having watched growing esports of varying uh um le levels of like uh <clears throat> production there are some people who are hired initially who are not very good so that's going to be fun even, even looking back at starcraft like oh sure yeah like yeah. even just looking at staying with our own game oh man there's a mystery yeah 2010 well literally starcraft 2 was at one point the toxic uh atmosphere where people oh, yeah. were backstabbing each other and undercutting each other. Mm. And there was people trying to claw, you know, people down, push people down to get up. Um, and then it just, you know, naturally kind of fixed itself. Uh, so absolutely it's going to happen. in our, our RTS is not special in that regard, I think. Only the, the size of the RTS scene is. And in part also, I mean, it's, it's the average StarCraft fan is so much older that a lot of that stuff just falls out in the wash i'm actually kind of nice. scared about that you know a bunch of 18 year old commentators oh, come yeah. in and they're like pretty good too and i'm just i'm just gonna be like i'm too old i'm done i can't keep up i'm not yeah. terminally on online enough anymore like yeah the hip Are lingo you really gonna have the energy to keep up with someone who's casting like 14 hours a day or something <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm already at, not getting up at like 530 in the morning and then finishing this guy the, is yeah. literally older than I am, I believe. And I already look at his life and I say I'm too old for that. <laughs> yeah, I look at my own I take life a different and approach. I say I'm too old for it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm falling apart here. And see, I'm just this like is why I take a different approach. at the wall. <laughs> Every week I see Steadfast try and cast 14 hours of Starcraft and I'm like, how can I really make him feel the time is passing slowly because then i don't have to raise up to meet his expectations or his standards 
I can lower him to ours <laughs> where he feels like this isn't sustainable anymore. Mm. See, the, the trick is you got to do what I do to my mom when she's like, oh, it, it's, it's your birthday coming up because my birthday is in about a month. And my response is, how does that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Mother's Day was just a short weekend ago. And, and I, I love my mom. It's great. But like, you know, you do that to Steadfast. You're like, oh, you're, you're like, Steadfast. Like, oh, I did 14 hours. I'm like, okay, Steadfast. How did, how, how did that make you feel? <laughs> Apparently, my brother will ask my uh, nephew, like after he touches a hot pan, like, what did you learn? And I just want to ask Steadfast after 14 hour days and him dying on the last hour. So what did we learn here today, Steadfast? <laughs> It doesn't matter what the answer is. I'm not going to remember it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My yes, brain uh, is no longer is, recording. Sleep deprivation is positively correlated with memory loss. You are correct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really do just want to like go back to your VOD and just clip you like right before the semis of the most recent NA Cup where you literally were just like staring off in his face like. Yeah. <laughs> I, think I, I think I can keep going. Oh, steadfast okay. the passion lord <laughs> just mm. like oh my god we need to get good this is what we call content yeah yeah like some we, we need so we need storm get to get big enough where there are people producing youtube compilations of our own channels like as happens because hey that's that's great net marketing and someone is going to make a compilation of steadfast just staring into space <laughs> and like, be like 15 hours long coming and to terms with like, things wow, with like some snappy you music. must have been collecting this for like three years and they'll be like nah that <laughs> was a month week. and a half <laughs> oh hey we need to wrap this up don't we um yeah. on five and a half hours no no q a i think today guys um what which... we're not gonna use twitch's brand new guest star feature to do call-ins come on it only works on chrome and how does, does that not work? work on firefox you do it's not know source. about the guest star stuff with twitch i've seen it advertised this and i have like, no idea this is like the thing okay this is the equivalent of Twitch's Overwatch League. Like, where they just, they looked at this thing, and they're like, this, this is the future of Twitch. And everyone else just looks at it as like, I, I mean, sure, whatever, it's like an okay-ish feature, I guess. Like, but like, it's not that, it's not that amazing. Like, no. What if we divert as many resources as possible and just keep building on guest star? And it's just been like a year or two years or something, or like a year and a half or something of them just continuing to add features to guest star <laughs> instead of doing a lot of the other th feature <laughs> development that a lot of people have been wanting. People just keep looking at it. It's like, why, why are you still working on this? Why are you still promoting this? Nobody cares. Yeah. Harsh. And like, and I still can't use it because it's on Chrome only. Like don't add features, add compatibility. Anyway. I, I don't even know what it does though. I need it's, to get an it's, a, it's a browser source that that your viewers can use to either pay in some way channel points whatever to like join your stream so oh, with like audio yeah video and audio and video um, and you can also use it with like yeah. other for example we could be doing this call on guest yeah. star and then the idea is that then we'd all just be built in through that and then it would show our handles and you could just invite some random twitch viewer in or something and have them like pop out yeah, like it actually be with them really nice for things like call-ins at the end of a podcast or they actually do have a queue for like call-ins yeah. and stuff mm -hmm. so. yeah and you, you can boot people and you have, you have control and like i would my thought was like oh you know pay five bucks and co-cast or something you know like oh yeah uh, now we're on a two minute delay so that's not great but uh and that, that kind of ruins it but <laughs> i mean there are definitely applications it's just you know twitch's poor implementation yeah okay well that is interesting no i mean if anyone wants to ask, if anyone has a really good question i'll give you one minute to, to hype it in chat Maybe fast typers, but it has Jeopardy, been a very Jeopardy long time. Uh, ready? The Jeopardy thing? The Jeopardy theme. Oh, yeah. theme. As, oh. as they type, you know. <clears throat> do, 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 do. do. Uh, DMCA'd. Um, it, uh, it, uh, yeah. it, uh, yeah, it's been pretty long. I'll probably, I, I will legitimately divvy this up into two segments. I think the Stormgate does constitute its own episode. Um, mm -hmm. will Grand Finals be coveted in Stormgate? That's a that's a fair question. You know, we have to kind of explain why it's not really coveted in StarCraft too, though, which is a yeah, uh, a discussion. I guess TLDR: if the games are really good, then people will want them. But a lot of the time, like the finals, as just being the finals, is not really worth the um the 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 the, the moaning that goes along with it. You know, because you aren't tasteless and basically. Uh, 
which I think has changed a little bit in the last year. But I mean, if, if they didn't do Cat of Eats, there would have been a riot in the streets, right? Oh, yeah. I, th- yeah. I think that was part of it. I think the other part of it was also there was a general sentiment along, I think, a lot of the StarCraft casters at the events that there was not really a lot of career growth stuff anymore yeah. for it. Mm-hmm. Like, you didn't, I think in the past, doing a grand finals and everything used to mean like, oh, this is like putting you front and center. This is something you can add to your reel. And like, oh, this is something that maybe gets you a bit more attention and everything. Now it's just like, all the pressure, Nobody, no, little, no reward. No, there's, there's no reward. You probably get more shit from the community and everything. Mm-hmm. You're not going to like be able to say, like, oh, I've done like these grand finals casts. I can charge more or something. It's just like yeah. a lot of pain and not a lot in return. Mm-hmm. Yep. All no, pain, you, you no the, gain. You do the grand finals and then your day rate decreases for the next season. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone's day rate. Um, I, I think the answer is at the start, yes, like straight up because it's a new game and things will be changing. But mm-hmm. yeah, after that, what Zombie Group said. Yeah, because there's no doubt that it was important. Um, mm-hmm. Tastes and Artosis, uh, marketing the way that they did back in the early days, um, has led them to the success they have now. Not just their their chemistry and their and their skill. It's the way that they marketed themselves, making sure to always be hired together and making sure to always get the finals. Uh, yeah, which, like, fortunately for them, people wanted them to do, so it kind of worked out. <clears throat> like think think about the um, if you remember the the final the the homepage leading up to BlizzCon that they would put in StarCraft that had the the calls of the World Championship winning calls. And it was Tasteless Artos they sent the entire time because that's how that's worked. Again, oh, yeah. Don't remember that you actually. want to talk about career growth. <laughs> Sorry? I don't remember that actually. Oh yeah, it was I, I remember it because it was so hyped. The, the background? Um, yeah, like the animated like background. The in oh, game. the background of StarCraft. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. And it comes yes. in like, you yes. know, life or in SOS does it, whatever. And then I forget the calls, but like you have that and there was some music and it zoomed around. Oh, man. That was cool. That was, that was so hype when they did it for the first time. Yeah, no no doubt about that. Um, So the, the, that is one of the biggest reasons to want to do finals. Um, Otherwise, you know, the, the biggest reason is that you just really want to enjoy the games. So I still consider it to be an honor and... um. You know, I still mm-hmm. I still want to do it if I really like the series, but you know, it's just you know, it's it's not really worth it in StarCraft to to fight over it for sure. It's not worth it to fight over it. Um, for Stormgate, I imagine there will be a little more bickering. Um, honestly, what's going to happen? I can say with almost a hundred percent guarantee, Tasis and Artosis will once again dominate the conversation, even with a lot of the other big commentators and content creators coming in, no matter what. <laughs> no matter if they don't play the game or they're not good at it. Not saying that they, they they'll do that, but just it won't matter. Um <clears throat> so that's uh that's kind of already figured out anyways. If they're gonna be hired for stuff, yeah. there's no there's no question anyways. <laughs> Especially because Nick's mom is, you know, one of the founders of Stormgate or a Frost Giant. So Well, I, I don't expect like, that to be a decision maker. No, yeah, but it does do like, I don't think so either. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I mean if it is, I'd be actually kind of upset about that. I think I'm more saying that we know that he's going to be involved, even if it wasn't just a new. Oh yes, yes, 100. Yeah. percent The the question more is like, do they have the uh the money to pay them? <laughs> that's, yeah, it's fair. So I was gonna ask what you guys expect from like Stormgate esports if it's going to be a lot of third party events and stuff initially. What third parties do you think are going to be interested? Like, is ESL going to be trying to run stuff? Mm-hmm. Do you think like Red Bull, other organ? I honestly, I was kind of. In the past, my list of organizers would not just be Red Bull. I also would have included Beyond the Summit, but that's not a... That's not uh, Wisdom, a actually, is uh, has been tweeting at them a little bit, saying they're excited. Yeah. Okay. True. Yeah. So, like, what what things do you... What do you think that circuit and stuff looks like? Or what do you think that the overall scene would or could look like in that world? Because I think that also affects things like, can they afford, t- afford Tastosis? Or some of these really big content creators and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would love it to be more like the days of early StarCraft 2, where there's mm-hmm. multiple production companies. And so there's, and what's happening in CSGO as well, where there's definitely the two different major companies and they have their choices of talent with only some co casting teams like go- going to everything. <clears throat> so, like Machine and Sponge. But yeah. uh, I think it's possible it would happen, but I think we're not talking about nearly the same size. So I think. Real, I would guess every other production company that comes in, perhaps even including ESL, would 
not afford them, and then Stormgate would. But that really depends I, on them too. I don't know their thoughts. I mean, on... like like official Frost Giant events would afford them, but third party wouldn't. Basically, yes. That's what you're saying. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Um, what kind of started to happen anyways with them, actually. Yeah. Start like, you get them for Catapizza, and that's it. Actually, we yeah. didn't even get them for Catapizza for a while, but... Exactly. So, um, yeah, I, I think that the finals will be coveted by a lot of people. I personally won't be very, like, gung-ho to fight people about it, again, unless I like it, and mm -hmm. unless I am very critical of their casting and think I actually will do a better job. Otherwise, um, I don't think it's really going to uplift me that much anyways. Uh, but I, I could be totally wrong. I mean, I've not been in that that situation before. Maybe I'm making a huge mistake not elbowing people out of the way, <clears throat> given the opportunity. But it should go to the... I think there's going to be an obvious pairing if they are hired. So mm. <clears throat> Yeah. Would you yeah. guys be in preference of Zombie Grub's favorite topic for her other podcast that she does, which is paired commentators, duos, set commentator duos, where you have a set casting partner. You just pretty much cast with them. I mean, have you for met Bale Fest? <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I, it, it, I think it's certainly good for your, like, it, it is good for marketing yourself as a pairing. I mean, there's a reason that Riot's been cracking down on it. It's right. weird though because people people will say Riot's cracking down on it and they'll give examples of it, but they still have cast pairings. That's so fair, yeah. they're they're really weird. They are really weird. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they, there is evidence that they do crack down on um, brand growth of a commentating team, but they still allow them and they still prefer them. So the mix and match. Explain what you mean by like cracking down on it. Um, forcefully separating them. them not letting them actually go to the same events. Um, oh. And then also saying that you're now paired with someone else just in totally and completely. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was a whole controversy. What was it, last year? I think it was yeah, last like year. Yeah, middle last year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's weird then, but the, the, like they literally still have pairs. Um, it just basically is that the idea is they don't want them to get too strong. Uh, and that actually mm. literally goes back to tasis and artosis. <laughs> Thanks, Tastosis. It, it really All does. It literally does. Um, esports, esports behind the scenes secrets. No one wanted the hmm. bargaining power of Tastosis ever happen again. I don't know if they succeeded because I, I could think of Machine and, and Sponge as being as coveted as they once were, but I could be wrong. I don't know. I, well, in fairness, that's, that's not Riot, though. Well, or I'm just I... talking about general esports. Like the entire okay, esports okay. industry agreed they didn't want the same thing to happen oh, okay so like i was thinking of like specifically riot cracking down no. kind of we weren't seeing it elsewhere no um so um but I, I, like i have always said that i like the mix and match system i see the appeal of permanent duo casting but i think if your goal is to take down the current top pair it's going to be impossible anyways and not because they're literally so much better than us tasis and artosis or um, their history is something you can't replicate. It actually would be, and I think this will start to negatively affect them too, they were literally together in the same space to talk to each other, to mm. uh, brainstorm together, to hang out afterwards at the 7-Eleven and talk to each other. And actually, if they wanted to do content, they could always do it together. Like them being in the same locale for the most of their career is undeniably a reason as to why they became so good. So even mm. if I paired up with Fear Dragon permanently and we really tried to work on our craft, it probably would never be the same. Just because I don't live next to Stormgate? Would any of you move if Stormgate really took off? To be... I, mean, I have to move in a year anyways, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> like my, my, my degree's done. Where would we move? Like, if, 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 if Stormgate blows up and Frost Giant says, we want to have a studio broadcast week after week in... And uh, not in Pasadena, um, in Irving, in Irving, California, in Irvine, California, Burbank, Burbank. Where everyone did it, but yeah, yeah, or like, okay, wherever they're student, like, we want you to be there. I'd do it 100%. Mm, I'd be, the, I'd be conflicted. I think I would do it if I was, I was guaranteed a certain amount of safety. 
Yeah, yeah, they yeah. offer you a contract, like a two year contract right. or something. Then I yeah. probably What's a would. Contract. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> it's words on yeah, paper. I'd, be, I'd be a hard maybe. It'd be very situational. If they do what they what they did with the Overwatch League casters that first time. Uh, how right. much guaranteed salary per year would you actually say? That's a very weird question because that gets into some various. I mean, numbers. like cost of living, right? Depends on where we go yeah. to. Yeah. 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 I, I was going to say, like, if you had to, like, how much money would you have to have per year to, like, move to Brewing, California or something? And, like, assuming that you just had a guaranteed amount, not even necessarily salary, but literally just guaranteed, like, income per, for the year, actually. Uh, very simple answer. If it, matches if it gets close to matching what i'd make as an engineer there but you know or like what, what i would get using my degree versus that casting. seems pretty high good luck yeah am that's i fair. wrong is that not going to be really high that okay i, mean, I, I know the are LCS you talking are only making... base salary you're not including any stock or anything i'm not including stock options right i'm just talking like you'd roughly even equivalent. then man even then remember i'm not a like... software engineer okay Okay. Not a How much engineer? would you predict to make if you moved to Burbank? I have no idea. <laughs> like, uh oh, that's why I I don't know. Like I know in general, as a PhD robotic robotics guy, it's like north of 100k. Um, but I have no idea. Like uh, the cost of living in California is so messed exactly. up. Exactly. I was okay. gonna guess 100,000. I was. Uh, <laughs> I think your your poverty 100k. <laughs> like massively uh, undershooting it. Like for California. I know people who are getting entry level jobs with a bachelor's degree at like 150. Holy well, know, um, hold God. on. There are co commentators who literally do not make $100,000 who live around that area. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, calm down a little saying that I'm basically enabling myself in a poverty. Like, calm down. <laughs> but, oh, you're talking to Beowulf. Okay. <laughs> well, chat uh, as well. I mean, I'll give me your time. But yeah. Yeah, but, I, you know, I'm basically looking to make like a. Uh, uh, manageable income all right yeah. like because i think the kind of underlying question is do you need far more assurance like you need to ask for much more money because you know it's going to be a temporary thing i think is usually what the question is for a lot of people so it's not like what do you need to live on your own in this area which is usually people respond with that is my bare minimum <laughs> It's, mm. will you do this if we cannot guarantee four years of work? We can only guarantee two. So if they say we guarantee two, you might say, well, I need $200,000 because you might cut me off anyways afterwards. Or the eSport won't exist afterwards anyways. But uh, I would be okay with just making enough to live on my own with relative means, you know, being a being normal person. <clears throat> And I mean, in fairness, like if it dies, we can just we can if if you don't buy a house, obviously, and you're not buying a house in California, no. for the most part, let's be real. Uh, you can always if it's like okay, you know what, I'm here, I've been paid X amount, esports is dead, there are no other opportunities, I can move. You know, I can go to a uh, a more tax and income friendly locality once this is over. You mm -hmm. know, moving's not fun, but right. And I have a safety net. I just go back home. It doesn't really, you know, yeah. and. Uh, Kind of jealous about how central Colorado is to everything. Like, let me tell you, middle of nowhere, New Hampshire, you don't get anywhere fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, um, someone mentions that you don't really need to be like living in Silicon Valley. I mean, that's true, but we are, I think the scenario is also an actual production where we mm -hmm. maybe are going to the studio, let's say three out of seven days, which doesn't What's sound up? like too much, but then there might be a meeting on the fourth day because that's what they did in League of Legends for a while. And then you're four to seven days or four to five work days, obviously, um, traveling potentially in California traffic. Oh, God. That would with be no, fucking terrible. With no public transit? Or yeah. <laughs> I don't um, know. That actually I, sounds pretty bad. <clears throat> I, I want to, isn't actually, I want to say that at one point the LCS casters were saying, like, once they moved to country, like, they were making around like 200, 200K a year. Mm. Um, and I'm like, I don't have sources for that. I feel like that's a number I heard bandied about as kind of maybe it was actually on one of your podcast on one of your caster calls uh zg um it's just kind of like yeah this is kind of the, the lcs it wasn't like number one caster but it was like yeah, this is the lcs lcs caster mm -hmm. and it was thrown out as a number that was far too low considering everything else that was happening no it was the richard lewis i think something um oh, usually sure. like we're comparing caster talent rates in esports versus talent rates anywhere else yeah and it's like 
200k, which we might think is quite a bit, but is so low compared to like the equivalent in you know baseball or oh absolutely football or something. Oh yeah, 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 mm. yeah, yeah. for sure. But I think that number was around 200 grand. That doesn't surprise me. I think like sports commentary is so different though because the amount of opportunities really oh, yeah. is almost limitless. Um, there's a lot more negotiating that can happen than than now any esport anyone like even Golden Boy who's done like a bajillion esports at this point still can't do exactly what uh, you know the a really famous basketball commentator could yeah, do moving around Holter. cities. Yeah, yeah. Not that they want to move around cities, of course, but yeah, I get my point. Um, <clears throat> so uh, another question: Can we go to bed now? Yes, I think we should go to bed now. <laughs> uh, you <laughs> said that you were going to take questions as long as they were coming in, and you haven't taken. I questions. said if they were interesting. <laughs> There is I, one. I like how we turned that one one question into like a twenty minute conversation. Thanks, Ravi. That was Ravi's problem. Oh yeah, I actually am actively trolling because I am in the what's like what's the way to describe it? The earliest time zone. So I am the yeah. least impacted by this going late. Hey, hey, I... And I'm literally eating here. I'm like not making any sacrifices at all. This is so good. I've been trying to build my water in like two and a yeah, half hours. Even just... even as I describe this. And I continue monologuing. I'm actually actively explaining how I'm dragging out the show oh yeah. by dragging out the show. It's so good. You guys, you guys aren't even cutting me off. I'm still going right now. Nobody's saying anything. <laughs> so I, I have I have a superpower, and it's oh. called grad student sleep schedule, which is always messed up. So we're good. Ah, I, do I don't have, have a consistent one. I did have to get in seven hours to cast. Oh well, yeah, definitely we need we need to let Zizi go to bed. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Can't believe you have this kind of sleep schedule. That clearly means you didn't stay up for GSL last night. I which means that did not, so I can cast the replays and be surprised. Bunny won. Oh. Thank you. Bunny was wasn't even in the top four. Yes, he was. Was he? Yes. Shows you how much I've been paying he attention, was. so I can <laughs> so I can sound good when I cast. I'm just kidding. I, or am how I? did you guys, by the way, avoid the GSL spoilers while also being on Twitter? Twitter was um, not a problem for me. It was going yeah, around. I didn't have an issue with Twitter. Twitter. My Twitter was immediately full of the G. Like I actually, I accidentally woke up and watched the GSL finals. But like, I was gonna say, my Twitter I was immediately watched the full GSL finals. That's what I did. Like, I normally would, but because the replays are out. You cast better if you don't know what's going to happen. So. Yeah, yes, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except I am so far behind. I still need to group C and D of the. <laughs> oh, I, damn. I, I oh, know. I did spoil oh, wait, it then. Sorry. You guys don't <laughs> watch fine. the replays first to see what happens, and then you can really. It sounds smart. Sounds smart. Yeah. Nice. Uh, no, I, I do look at the. I do look at how long the replays are in total, so I can like judge how long my stream is going to be. Imagine someone does that to get a edge up in the beginning of an esport that has replays. Used to do that. Yeah. So they sound smarter and they Hus get to a Husky live show too? and they just don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> okay, so that's okay, why I don't con do that. Controversial uh, point. Even though I agree it's like way more authentic to just do the things blind. <clears throat> counterpoint is if you can if you have knowledge of what's gonna happen, for the viewer's entertainment, you can build stories and like build the context of what's happening in the game a lot better. Even if it means that you're less authentic, the viewer experience would, could arguably be better. So you know, I think Zombie Girl is grinning because she bitch. knows I'm just baiting another topic of conversation. <laughs> I'd put you from the so Discord. Did, did Husky actually have a, a fair point in creating better content? <laughs> you could have opened up with such a more <laughs> meany question. <laughs> I know, but I, I need I was need to Hitler bait wrong? this out. I, I need to bait this <laughs> out as like a serious thing. On the off chance that one of you just like couldn't hold it in of me being like, was Husky correct? <laughs> <laughs> Idra was right. Those Colossus oh were not God. in fact Halus. <clears throat> void rays is void rays. Ah, that's true. But no one's answering my question. You know, the the answer is go to the he bed, knows Robbie. I'm the weak link. Finish on your this dinner. One. Yeah, <laughs> it's time me. to wrap it up, guys. It's just about six hours. Um, we're not what gonna, about shout outs? We're not going to round it out. Please follow my uh, co-host here. Fear Dragon doesn't stream, so don't worry about him. But <laughs> That's Beomo, true. Steadfast, that is their Twitch handles as well. Um, Twitter's. <laughs> it's not Steadfast. Isn't it? Steadfast SC. Steadfast SC. Got to fix that. Because is it your Storm Twitter? Is coming up. 
Uh, so steadfast SC2 SC on Twitter and steadfast SC2 on. I might have had it star- steadfast SC before. I adapted the overlay because I actually tried to make it all of oh. our um, Twitch handles, but obviously I, I gave up. <laughs> Why don't you have steadfast as a handle? Is it even taken? It is taken. Yeah. Oh. Otherwise, can you, can I would you message have it. someone about that. Can I what? Can you message someone about that? I if it's like I, not in use for a long enough I don't even have a I don't even have an account manager with Twitch who am I gonna message oh uh, uh, that's fair but remember when on... Smix took care of us I remember oh uh, that was a great Man. time uh, you know what Twitter I want? is doing something interesting where they're yeah. deleting accounts that haven't tweeted for a certain amount of time so like have you looked into seeing if Oh God! Wait. You guys are letting me do this. Oh my God! How is no one aware that I'm literally just oh. actively dragging out the show? I mean, I was just changing his handle, yeah. so oh, okay, I, I'm okay. aware. I just got excited because someone owns Beowulf and has not tweeted since 2012 on Twitter, and I was yeah. hoping that they had actually deleted it, but they haven't deleted it yet. Yeah, I, w- I was gonna say steadfast. Steadfast is actually an account on Twitter that no one has tweeted from, and like yeah. So they're I mean, a management consultant and occupational therapist. You could just actively check it constantly and see if you could grab that would you change it would it actually make sense or would that be like brand damaging uh we're talking about stormgate it absolutely does makes sense oh because you you can't be storm you can't be steadfast sc it to be steadfast sg as steadfast i mean if you don't have sc in your twitter handle are you even a true starcraft fan that's what I'm saying, right? That's like, true. like Trump, Trump, Trump had Trump SC. Trump SC, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was oh, a Hearthstone we streamer. But... Okay, with that, we're done. Yeah. We're done. Oh, we're done. Your dragon has baited on. people into I have more again. topics <laughs> to talk about. Stop it. All right. Thanks, guys, Stop. for stay- staying around for six hours. Um, <sighs> I'd say blame Fear Dragon. But much appreciated, yeah, guys. Have. I worked hard for 30 minutes to drag this out. <laughs> much appreciated. Uh, I, I, just want, I just want one final thing. Can you mute if him, you look please? back at the last 40 minutes, I only ask questions. I never even answer them. I was actively <laughs> just trying to drag them out. <sighs> well, uh, we'll try and alert you guys to the next episode oh. when we plan one. But thanks, guys. And uh, let's send you on your way. Who else is streaming right now? Nero. That's who. Let's raid Nero. Steadfast, you're not going to drive right now? stream right now? I'm not gonna drive. I'm definitely not gonna drive right now. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, At guys. Home. We would crash. Bye. Bye. Bye.